<laughs> the guy that Rod is going to be able to see this afternoon in Kentucky Louisville game is Stefan LaForce. Bobby Petrino and the Cardinal staff, not really sure what they had on their hands from the standpoint of how good a college quarterback he would be. They certainly knew that he was a unique guy. My name is Stefan LaForce, quarterback from the University of Louisville. Sign language was probably my first language. My family is predominantly deaf. Um, I have some cousins that are that are hearing like me, but for the most part, everybody's deaf in our family. Whenever they needed me to you know, interpret for them, um, you know, little things, going to the store, ordering food, made me grow up faster. Yeah, they come to games. Uh, they'd rather watch them on TV. They can see it better, and you know, see what the commentators are saying with the closed caption and all that. You know, I was blessed to come out hearing, and uh, you know, thank God every day for that. It is a remarkable story about Stefan and his family and overcoming those challenges in real life, probably enabling him to hold off challenges from talented freshman quarterbacks like Brian Brom that have challenged him at Louisville, Michael Bush last year. Certainly not the only weapon Louisville has. Yeah, we've seen him, and he's a terrific player, but Louisville is really predicated upon Eric Shelton. You're going to see a big running back, the former Florida State player, at 151 yards in this game. Stephon LaFour is as beautiful as a quarterback, but the bottom line for Louisville to win this game, establish to run against that great defense Mark talked about earlier. I think it's the same thing for Kentucky. You've got Arlo Speech. He's got to run the ball effectively to take the pressure off a of quarterback, Shane Boyd. Boyd. But watch Shane Boyd run with the football in this game. Very athletic. The Governor's Cup up for grabs. Let's go out to Louisville now and Dave Pash. ESPN's Labor Day weekend kickoff. Only about 60 miles separate Lexington and Louisville. Wildcat fans come and pass to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium as one of the more unheralded yet intense rivalries is renewed here today. Kentucky is 4-1 late time in Louisville, but the Cardinals have dominated the series of late, winning four of the last five overall. The battle for the Governor's Cup is next. Welcome back on campus at the University of Louisville, where today the Cardinals take on intrastate rival Kentucky. Louisville won nine games in 2003. Kentucky won just four and had a 1-7 record in the SEC. Tenth time in 11 years that these two schools have opened up against one another. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Pash. In 2002, Kentucky essentially ruined Louisville's season. The Cardinals were a preseason top 20 team. They were even talking BCS. But Kentucky came to Louisville, knocked off the Cardinals 22-17, and Louisville finished that year 7-6. But Rod Gilmore, last year Louisville got revenge and turned up the intensity on this rivalry. I'll tell you this, Louisville knows how to pour gasoline on a fire. Let's go back to last season and take a look at what happened in this ball game. It was the fourth quarter. Louisville was dominating physically pushing Kentucky all over the field, up by nine, running out the clock. So you take a knee and in the game, right? Well, they don't do it on fourth down. They get inside the five-yard line, and instead of taking a knee to end the game, they give Lionel Gates the ball. And what's he do? He gets a touchdown. Oh, did that tick off Kentucky? No doubt. They are laying for that. They are prepared for it. They wanted their own payback today. And that rivalry has a lot of heat to it because of games like that and accusations of running up the score like that. But it actually goes much deeper for the program. They compete in recruiting for the best Kentucky high school players. Four of the last five high school Kentuckians crowned Mr. Football in this state have gone to the University of Louisville. Interestingly, Louisville has won four of the five last game against Kentucky. And so this is huge, not just for the Heat, but for the future of these programs. Certainly, Trevor, the team that wins this game earns more than just bragging rights for one year. Kentucky has won two of the last three games in Louisville with the lone loss coming in overtime. Can the Cats do it again, or is this one for the Birds? Who will hoist the Governor's Cup in 2004? We find out next. ESPN's College Football Sunday. Brought to you by Bacardi Silver Lyman Premium Malt Beverage. Flavor your night. Louisville and Kentucky getting ready to do battle here. 
First, though, let's check in with the fourth member of our crew. Let's go down to the sideline and Dave Ryan. Hi, right, Dave. Thanks so much. Louisville in this game has two very distinct weapons. One is special, one is unique. Let's start with unique in Michael Bush, the sophomore running back at 6'3", 240 pounds. But the question is, is he just a running back? He played five different positions in preseason camp. Three on offense, two on defense. Coach Carter Petrino says he'll play up to 15 snaps on the defensive side of the ball. And then there's special, the all-world quarterback recruit, Brian Brom. His two older brothers were stars here. His dad, Oscar, is a quarterback here. He should play in this game as well. Guys, keep these numbers in mind for Brian Brom. 119 touchdown passes as a high school quarterback. Three state titles, one national player of the year. The Brian Brom era starts today. Brom will not start this game. That will be quarterback Stefan LaFour as a first-team all-conference USA, Dave. But Brom will see action, although head coach Bobby Petrino would not tell us in our meetings yesterday when Brom will play, only that he will play today. About 86 degrees, humidity is about 70%. I'm sure Dave will be keeping track on the field of the temperature. It's expected to feel like about 100, 105 on the field. Clint Ruth will boot it away for Kentucky. Roderick Clark and Lionel Gates to receive. And we're underway from Papa John Stadium. It'll be Roderick Clark, one of the top return men in the country two years ago, was hurt by a hamstring most of last year. And he's taken down right around the 20-yard line by John Sumrall. Stefan LaFour has replaced Dave Ragone last year and led the Conference USA in total offense. Through for the third highest yard total in school history. Rushed for over 400 yards, the most ever by a Cardinal quarterback. First down from the Louisville 20-yard line. Eric Shelton is the running back. He rushed for over 150 yards in the season opener against Kentucky last year, but going to the air is LaFors. It's complete to his leading receiver, J.R. Russell, and he has the first down again of about 12 to the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at the skill players for Louisville. A full arsenal, including Russell. Well, move over, Mark Clayton, Dion Branch, because that man you just saw catch the ball can run after the catch and may wind up being the best receiver at Louisville. As we talked about earlier, we'll see three running backs. Shelton, who's 247 pounds. Gates is 225, Bush at 240. Russell at 1,213 yards last year. He's caught a pass in 23 straight games. First down from the Louisville 32. This is Shelton. Makes a man miss. And then finally tackled at the 36 game of about four on the play. The Louisville offensive line is big, but it's also very athletic. Well, the Wildcats of the SEC are going to face probably the best line they'll face all season long, and they don't need Sweet Pea Burns, their best football player, to be healthy. He might only play about 20 plays before they'd better count against this offensive line. Burns had 18 tackles for a loss last year, the most in the Southeast Conference. Second down and six, and an empty backfield. Five wide for the fours. Before us. with tons of time, has a man wide open. Joshua Tinch down inside the 30 yard line. Four yard pickup. LaForce does a nice job of looking everyone off to the left side of the field. He had his choice of receivers in that soft zone that time. You see Flower, I'm sorry, Booker 10 was underneath the ball. He was supposed to be deeper. But what made that work was protection. There was no help for the offensive line. They blocked one on one to allow the freedom to get open. Michael Bush is into the game now, a tailback, and he gets it. Sweeping. And then try to cut it back inside. It picks up two or three in the 28-yard line. Linebacking core for Kentucky. A little bit banged up, as is the secondary for Rich Brooks' team. Well, and that's going to be an issue. You saw that long ball. Keep your eye on Booker, number 10. He's inexperienced, and he's going to have to deal with some pretty good receivers. Muhammad Abdullah, a second-team All-SEC member last year, had four interceptions, but all those came in the first five games. Second and eight for Louisville. From the Kentucky 28-yard line, they go in shotgun. Inside running play, Lionel Gates to the outside 20. And finally cracked out of bounds inside the 10. 
An 18-yard run by Lionel Gates. Carl Booker on the tackle. Travis LeFew, left tackle, came across and threw a terrific block. Watch him come across, and he won't do a terrific drive block, but he gets just enough of his man to slow him down and allow Gates to get that corner. And this is a read play. You saw LeFew check out that side, and then Gates gets to the outside. Once LeFew, LeFleur makes that read as to the outside, he allows him to make that decision to go outside himself. First down and goal at the Kentucky 9. Rich Brooks told us this week, best part of their team is their defense. Not a good start here for UK. But this is an excellent play in the backfield as Gates is ripped down by Ellery Moore, starting defensive end. Well, penetration is how you stop great running backs. And you see Ellery Moore, number 98, get through. He splits a double team and stops the back before he has a chance to make his cut. If Kentucky has any hope at all of stopping this three-headed monster of great running backs, it's by getting that kind of penetration. Moore had a couple of sacks last year. That tackle for loss of uh, a four yards, and it's second and goal now from the 13, and then the shotgun is LaFleur. Remember, LaFleur is a danger to run the football as well. Here he goes to the air, and it's caught by Montrell Jones at the six-yard line. Jones, a transfer from Tennessee, but is a Louisville native. At 22 catches as a freshman for the Volunteers two years ago. Carl Booker on the tackle. You know, we talked about this rivalry. Well, Montrell Jones, 86, caught that ball. He's part of the rivalry. He's a guy from this area, Mr. Football back in 2000, and there are quite a few of those guys on the Louisville team. A lot of guys on Kentucky that are from Louisville, including wide receiver Keenan Burton, who's a star. We'll see him when Kentucky gets the football. Third down and goal from the six. Big play here for the Kentucky defense. LaFour's rolling out. Again, with tons of time, takes off. Dives to the goal line. No signal yet. He's going to be down. Just shy of the goal line. It'll bring up fourth down and inches. What do you do, guys? Well, all receivers are covered, and this is one of the advantages of having a senior like Stephon LaForce. He sees everybody covered, and actually, we didn't expect that. We don't expect Kentucky to be able to do this. LaForce didn't either. So he pulls it down and runs rather than makes a risky throw and risks an interception. And they go for it on fourth down because they've been pushing them around on the field. They got over 200 yards rushing against them last year. They should be confident in their ability to run the ball. And Gates and Shelton are in the backfield together. Shelton is the up back on fourth down and goal. Gates. Did not get in. Great stand by the Kentucky defense. Brad Booker and Sweet P. Burns team up to take care of Louisville on the goal line. Well, that's the penetration we talked about. Sweet P. Burns, number 98, led the SEC last year with 18 tackles for a loss. And he teams up to help make this happen. Now watch Booker get up there. Look at that. That's a linebacker stuffing it on the goal line. He's reading the back, flying right in, matching his movement with the back's movement and catching him at the highest point. He lost yardage on that play. That is huge for Kentucky. Huge to get that stop. But quarterback Shane Boyd has to start on his half-yard line. Boyd changing the play. Still plenty of time on the play clock. It's at 11. Boyd. Keenan Burton with a catch and gives Kentucky some breathing room, gain of about six or seven yards. Well, Kentucky lost four of its six offensive linemen last season, but there's another 300-pounder missing. Jared Lorenzen's career as quarterback at Kentucky is over. It's Shane Boyd's team now. The big fella. <laughs> How big was Jared Lorenzen? Uh, well, you know, he stood next to the Empire State Building, and King Kong <laughs> climbed him. <laughs> He was listed at 285, but come on. Tack on about 10 or 15, maybe more. Second down and three at the Kentucky eight. Kentucky goes with three wide. And Boyd has to call for time. Oh, 
So a great stop by Kentucky's defense keeps this game scoreless. Five minutes gone by in the opening quarter from Louisville. Back in Louisville, the Cardinals drive down the field only to get stoned on the half-yard line. Let's look at the backs and receivers for Kentucky. Keep in mind, J.R. Russell, good on the other side, but Marcus Jones is a guy up front that is almost as fast as J.R. Russell is for Louisville. Keenan Burton, a sophomore from Louisville, was not recruited by Louisville. Well, it's a great rivalry game, and the Louisville fans were more into it when Louisville came on defense after they got stuck on the half-yard line. Second down and three inside the Kentucky 10. Arliss Beach on the call, nowhere to go. Stacked up, minimal gain on the play. Elvis Dumerville and Marcus Jones on the tackle for Louisville. The offensive line for Kentucky features two sophomores and a junior, and man in the middle center, Matt McCutcheon, is making his first ever start. He, we mentioned Marcus Jones a moment ago. You saw the line had trouble with him on that last play. He's a quick guy, but he's also tough inside. And this offensive line for Kentucky is, has the most pressure on it of all the groups on the field today. Very young, very untested. Also undersized. Third down and two after the one-yard game. Louisville fans make it hard on Boyd to get the signals to his receivers and linemen. It's an option, and Beach makes a man miss and gets the necessary yardage for the first down. Should have been taken down in the backfield, but a nice move picks up five yards. William Gay makes the tackle. Look at the linebackers and the DBs for Louisville. They've got some guys who can run at linebacker. Robert McHugh, middle linebacker, 240-pounder, about as fast as a wide receiver. He just laid a massive lick on Shade Boyd on that last option. Boyd is going to think twice next time he runs that option. Gary Rhodes, the free safety, a big kid, 6'3", 315, will also play some corner, some man coverage on Kentucky's best receiver, Keenan Burton. You can see the Louisville secondary, not a, even in the picture. We do expect a lot of press coverage from those guys today. And here's a pass that sails way over the head of the intended receiver, Glenn Holt. Dave, you mentioned press coverage. Before we talk about that, you, we almost had a score before you went back to the goal line situation. You asked me if I thought that LaForce had gotten in there. Did you think so? It was close. Let's see if the ball crosses the plane before the knee goes down. I, I don't think he's close. I, I think that knee is down, and then the momentum carries him into the end zone. The momentum carries him in, but he takes a hit there on the ground and on that tackle, and those will start to add up. Beach in the backfield on second and ten, and he gets it straight on. And he is leveled by the middle linebacker, Robert McCune, who is six feet tall, 245 pounds. We talked about his speed earlier. He's 25 years old, led the team in tackles last year. Well, McCune is going to come from the left of your screen and come in and just drill Arliss Beach right there. Big hit. Now, this is one of the key matchups in this game because you can see McCune keyed in on one man, and that's Beach. The reason for that, if they can stop him, it puts the responsibility to move the offense on the board of the quarterback. They're down in seven, Kentucky, without one of its uh, starting receivers. Glenn Holt had to leave the game for the moment. With an apparent arm injury, we'll tell you more later. Third down and seven, midway through the first quarter. Here's Boyd. And he's got Burton. Did he hang on to it on the sideline? Yes, he did. It's a catch. Very close to the marker at the 24. And this is huge for Boyd. Last year, his early passes, his first pass was picked off. Ron Hudson, their offensive coordinator, wanted to get him comfortable. A nice out, well-thrown ball. They get something out of it. And he goes to his playmaker. Keenan Burton is the best receiver on this team and he's the one that's got the best rapport with Boyd so far in, in fall and so Boyd knows that being a, a first-year starter himself he needs to go to his players that are the best at making plays now keep in mind that Boyd struggled when he started against Kentucky as you mentioned before Dave and Louisville wants to force Boyd to beat them they know he's an excellent runner they don't want him on the edge they want him throwing the football Kentucky is going to be short and will have to pump the ball Boyd's numbers from last year, not very good, but again, didn't play much through only one pass in the game at Louisville, and that was an interception right. that changed momentum in that game. And, and plus, last year was the first year in a new offense. 
and this is the second year with this offense with Rich Brooks and his crew, and now he feels much more comfortable with knowing where that ball should go. Eight, fourth and inches, Anthony Thornton will boot it away. He's going to get a chance to throw it. <laughs> They're going to make him throw it a lot. Yep. It'll have to wait as Louisville and its potent offense should get the football. Montrell Jones back to receive the punt. And it's a fake, and Kentucky has the first down. How about that call, guys? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. Scott Mitchell, a junior college transfer. Actually, that's Marcus McClinton. Kentucky has two players wearing number two. McClinton sneaks it for the first down and fourth and inches. Well, there you see, right there in the center, he walks up there and is under center. Nobody reacted to it. Well, that's normal for the personal protector to go up in a loud stadium to make the calls, but normally he goes back four yards, yeah. and then they snap it to the punter. He put his hands under the center. That was very <laughs> sneaky. So first down to the Kentucky 28. I said Boyd was going to have to wait. He didn't have to wait very long. Here's Drake Davis, and Louisville strings that out, gain of three or four on the play. Rich Brooks in his second year at the helm at Kentucky. The National Coach of the Year 10 years ago when he was at Oregon. Spent a couple of years as head coach of the Rams, also a defensive coordinator in the NFL with Atlanta. He did a great job at Oregon for all those years and laid the foundation for Mike Bellotti's team. Here's Bobby Petrino, his second year at Louisville. Most wins ever by a first-year Louisville coach in 2003. Change in the play is Boyd, second and seven at the UK 31. Flag down, no play. Zero on the play clock. Somebody may have moved as well. Dick Honig, our referee. Old start, number 19 on the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. That's the wide receiver, Keenan Burton. One of the new changes in officiating this year. They're going to call out the number of the guy who is the guilty party. You guys like that? <laughs> Doesn't bother me. I wasn't a lineman or a defensive lineman. <laughs> and, I, and I never got called for any penalty my entire college career. Oh, so, oh yeah. Please. Never hell. You hold coming into the booth. No comment. <laughs> Trevor was telling us at dinner last night that linemen hold on every play. Now he's saying that he never gets called for holding. Second and 12 at the 26. Play pick. And Boyd steps up and takes off at the 30. And out near the 37-yard line, a gain of about 11. Bring up third down and short. Well, how would you like to be 300 pounds and only 17 years old and in your sophomore year? Sometimes you got a lot to learn. Watch Mobe Okoye as he gets a good push, and he has a shot at Boyd, but he gets too far up the field. He's a young man who last year was only 16 years old as a freshman, Trevor. And look at his body. He looks to me like he started shaving before I was even born. <laughs> he was born in Nigeria, tested into the ninth grade when he was 12 years old. Third down and one. Hand off to Beach. Not going to get it. Ankle tackled by Bobby LeFew in the backfield. And boy, are the Louisville coaches glad to see LeFew healthy. He's had some knee problems. It's a two-yard loss. Kentucky will punt. Bobby LeFew is turning it around on Kentucky. He'll come from the left of your screen and get right in and make this tackle. When you make it in the backfield, the back has nowhere to cut. That's the only way to stop it when it's third and that short. I give a little credit to Marcus Jones, though, as he was slanting inside, and he took away that alley so that the running back had to go outside further. Thornton on to punt, at least we think. Back at the 21. Fourth and two. Montrell Jones at the 22 to receive. Good kick by Thornton. And fair caught at the 16-yard line by Montrell Jones. 49-yard punt by senior from Louisville, Anthony Thornton. No score. Four and a half to play in the first. Back to Louisville in a moment.
ESPN's College Football Sunday is presented by Rustolium Epoxy Shield for the ultimate garage floor. And in part by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. They love horse racing here in Kentucky. And they're starting more and more to love their football as Michael Bush takes the inside handoff past the 20 for about five yards. Go back to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. Well, guys, Taylor Stubblefield is probably going to set the Big Ten record for career receptions, but he only scored six touchdowns before this. This is his seventh career touchdown, two of them coming today. Kyle Horton hitting him there, Purdue blowing out Syracuse. And Syracuse starting a true freshman this year at quarterback. Horton, a veteran at Purdue. Second down and five for Louisville. Quarterback Stefan LaFors. And in the backfield, they've got Gates and Shelton together, and Gates will get the football. Trying to sprint to the outside, cut it back, and got maybe two. So they'll bring up third down and short. Tonight, two teams hoping for a spot at Major League Baseball's postseason meet is Omar Vizquel and the Cleveland Indians. Welcome Vlad Guerrero and the Angels to Jacobs Field. It's at 8 Eastern tonight on ESPN2. Coverage begins with baseball tonight, driven by GMC on ESPN at 7 Eastern. Look at those Angels. They're not dead yet. No, not yet. Oh, man. Well, when you've got the rally monkey, you've always got hope. <laughs> Third down and three for LaForce. Louisville doubling up Kentucky in total yards with no score in the game. Here's LaForce. And the pass is broken up at the 29-yard line. Russell was the intended receiver. Irvin Flowers, who was banged up this week with a quad injury, broke up the pass. Flowers was reading LaForce's eyes. He's going to see the receiver come in, and he's going to wait until the ball's thrown. Now he's just going to wait, 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 and now he's going to come in. He reads the quarterback's eyes, and that's why he's able to break up that pass. That's perfect. When you have a quarterback with no backs in the backfield, three-step action, you don't need to wait. He's got to get rid of the ball quickly. Brent Moody to punt for Louisville. Drake <laughs> Davis standing at his 32 to receive the kick. And we've got a whistle and a flag down. Going to be against the Cardinals. Both start, 31 on the offense, five yards, fourth down. Yeah, so far, Kentucky has played a cleaner game, and the momentum and the intensity of the rivalry has helped Kentucky more than Louisville. Well, they've got to be real glad to stop Louisville three and out this drive when the first one went all the way down to the one-yard line. You don't want the idea of here we go again against this high-powered offense. Moody with an excellent kick, driving Davis inside the 25. Davis up past the 30 and a 32-yard line. Tackled by J.T. Haskins, who just committed a penalty moments ago. Still no score. Under three minutes to go. It's hot and humid day in Louisville. Back in Louisville, Kentucky fans have made about the hour and a half drive to here in Louisville from Lexington. They've got good reason to be excited after a pretty good first series from quarterback Shane Boyd. And guys here on the field, you really see what kind of presence he's got. As you mentioned, Dave, he didn't start much last year. Jared Lorenzen was their guy, but on the first drive, with his back to the loudest part of the stadium, he audible correctly, got them in the right play. Very good field presence early. A good sign for Kentucky and Shane Boyd. Dave, last year, Boyd in the same game had a touchdown passing, touchdown receiving, and touchdown rushing. And here he pitches on the option to Beach, and not much room on the sideline. Gary Rhodes, the free safety on the tackle. Shane Boyd is running the offense that Michael Bishop and L. Roberson ran at Kansas State under Ron Hudson. And that offense could be perfect for him because he's got such great running skills and such a strong arm. And much better for him than Jerem Lorenzen was able to run it last year. Lorenzen, good enough feet to move around, Trev Alberts, but... <laughs> Not good enough to run this offense to perfection. Boyd is the right athlete. <laughs> and the coach has told us that Boyd's arm is as strong as Lorenzen's arm. Boyd also a pitcher drafted twice by the Minnesota Twins. Here Boyd takes off. And he knows to to the 37 game of about three to bring up third down and five. So are you uh 
Are you jumping on Trev already? You think he's got to fire somebody else? I mean, how many, how many guys did he fire yesterday? Yeah. He fired Oklahoma's defensive staff because they didn't look uh, fired up enough for him. I think Mark helped him. They, fired, they should fire LSU's Nick Saban. They had a close game too, right? They had a close game. They also yeah. had to fire Mike Riley from Oregon State because they didn't pull it out. I mean, Trev's got everybody fired after the first week. What are you going to do to the kicker then if you fire all those guys? Make him the head coach. <laughs> Nobody left. Three missed PATs. Got to feel bad for that kid from Oregon State. Boy, to the air and through the hands of the tight end, Dobbins. Incomplete. Fourth down. Pass a little bit high, but probably could have been caught. But that is the game plan for Louisville. Get Boyd into third and five, third and six or more, and let's find out just how accurate a passer he is. And that's going to happen when you only complete 35% of your passes the previous year. So the game plan for Kentucky, let him do short passes, let him get used to it without falling behind, let him get acclimated to the speed of this game as the number one guy. So far, they're in that position. Anthony Thornton getting a lot of time on the field here in the first half. Montrell Jones steps forward at the 22. And Jones with a decent run back, and he fumbled the ball at the 31, but uh, they're going to say his knee was down. Recovered anyway by Louisville. Eight-yard return after a 41-yard kick. College football's first weekend continues on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern as UNLV takes on Tennessee. Remember what UNLV did early last year to Wisconsin. It's all part of Labor Day weekend presented by Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield on ESPN. For more, go to ESPN.com. Talk about Tennessee. Tennessee almost had the young quarterback here, Brian Braun. And there he is, the freshman from Louisville. USA Today National Offensive Player of the Year. And he goes to the air on his first play. And his pass is caught by Russell. Good balance. And Russell finally down at the 35. And four yards of the play. Sweet P. Burns on the tackle. They love this kid, Brian Brown. You have to ask yourself, what makes him so special? Well, how about a quick release? The time it took that ball to get out from the time he made up his mind wasn't very long. No, he's perfect for this offense. This is an actual, honest to goodness, NFL style offense that, that asks the quarterback to make the same kind of reads that he'll have to make if he makes it to the next level. That's one of the reasons that Braun chose Louisville. The biggest reason, however, his brother, Jeff Braun, former NFL quarterback, is the quarterback coach. And Shetton Powers to the 48 yard line for a 12 yard game. Muhammad Abdullah on the tackle. Shelton from Lexington, Kentucky. Transfer from Florida State. Watch number 23 from the left of your screen, fullback. That's Lionel Gates. He's one of their great tailbacks, lining up the fullback, blocking for his buddy Eric Shelton. And that didn't happen last year. They couldn't put them in the backfield together because they both wanted to carry the ball. Neither one would block for the other. But you saw that teamwork this night, which could make a good thing happen for them this season. It gives them a lot more options on the field. We saw earlier Shelton blocking for Gates, so Gates blocks for Shelton on that play. Time winding down in the opening quarter. And Brown will not get it off. Well, it looked early, guys, like Louisville might get a couple of touchdowns in the contest in the first quarter, but we are scoreless after one. We'll see what Brian Brom and the Louisville offense can do when we come back in quarter number two. We're back on campus, Louisville and Kentucky in a heated rivalry. True freshman Brian Brom and a quarterback for Louisville, his brother Greg, the director of football operations at Louisville, his other brother, Jeff, is the quarterback's coach, spent seven years in the NFL with six different teams as a player. Must be fun to sit in on those uh, meetings. <laughs> Stephon LaForce just probably plays referee. Here's Brian Brom with time, and then and the pressure's on, and he is sacked, thrown down by Raymond Fontaine. I wonder what big brother quarterback coach is saying on the sideline now, because he can be tough on his little brother. He probably would have liked for him to get rid of this ball. Well, the scouting book on Brian Brown is that he needs to get rid of the ball a little quicker than he has been so far in fall. And so he dropped back, didn't see anybody open, but I will give the freshman this credit. Rather than force the ball into something he didn't recognize, he pulled it down and ran. 
Louisville last year only allowed 13 sacks after giving up 46 two years ago. There's a screen and Bush takes what would have been a seven yard loss and gets maybe a half yard of play. Ellery Moore made the tackle. Well, the, the good news for Bobby Petrino is that if Brom plays well, he'll be developing two quarterbacks who can help him out. The bad news is he'll be developing two quarterbacks that can help him out because that's going to create a controversy. Remember Major Applewhite, Chris Sims of Texas? That controversy played out the entire time they were there. And if this guy is that good, it'll happen here too. You know, I disagree with that, though. You've got a senior in LaFleur as a freshman. You've got to get the freshman ready to play, and that's why he's in a big game now. If the senior goes down, you don't want your freshman to come in with no game experience. I'm not sure I agree with you on that, but I'll follow up. We'll arm wrestle for it. Brom on third and ten finds Clark, who's got some room down the sideline. Upended at the 34, but it's a 14-yard gain and a first down for the Cardinal offense. And that was a very well-thrown ball. You need to put the ball in a receiver's hand so he can run with it without having to change directions. Look at this ball. He gets it right on the numbers, and he goes right up the field. <laughs> His brother is real happy about it. Jeff Brown, quarterback coach on the sideline. He can be very hard on his little brother. This time he's very proud of him. What was it like with Stanford when John Elway came in, Rod? Well, that's why I have an issue with uh, Trevor here, and I'll follow this play first. Shotton on the carry. Falls forward to the 26 for about six or seven. Well, in this situation, you have a guy who's an all-conference quarterback who waited his turn to get in here and perform, and he did great. And now you bring in a freshman. I don't have a problem with him playing, but they came in and opened up the job. When I was back at Stanford, we had a fifth-year senior named Turk Schoener, great quarterback. John Elway came in. No doubt John was talented, but Turk Schoener was a better quarterback than John when John was a first-year freshman trying to get on the field. And it can divide fans, and it can hurt a team. Shelton trying to get outside and drop him along the scrimmage by Chad Anderson. You know what, though, Rod? You're completely daft. The other players want to have the best player on the on the field. And if it's an open competition, so what? Everybody's got an open competition. I don't get divided when there's an open competition. Okay. I don't care what you did last year. If I'm going to bust my behind running wind sprints, lifting weights, all the things you've got to do to be successful, I want everybody else to compete the same way so the best guy's on the field. How do you feel about your coach when you're a veteran, an all-conference player, and he comes in and says, I'm opening up your job to a freshman who hasn't been here and hasn't paid the price? I don't care how you feel. This is the big leagues. If you can't keep your job, you can't keep your job. Irvin Flowers with a nice play stepping in front there. Sorry, guys, to break up that pass, no, <laughs> making it fourth down. I, I love you, Rod. I really do. But uh, in this case, boy, I disagree. Well, that will probably be the only time that happens this year, huh? Yeah, no, for the next 30 seconds, I think. Louisville already 0 for 1 on fourth down. Going to go for it, fourth down and 3. You're going to have some guys that get better. You just hope that those guys aren't your vocal leaders who can start to yeah. permeate that to the rest of the team. It has to be legitimized. The players have to believe that the guy has earned it. You can't just give it to him. Well, you don't give him competition. The competition happens. Fourth and three. Ninth play of the drive. Brom on the rollout. Get a keep. And Brom has the first down inside the 20. Picks up seven on the play. An intrastate rivalry, Louisville, coming off a nine-win season. And the University of Kentucky, we're at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Kentucky won here two years ago when Louisville was a hyped football team. Dave Pass, Rod Gilmer, Trevor Manage, and Dave Ryan. Louisville was ranked 17th in the country two years ago. They were even talking BCS, but Kentucky beat the Cardinals, and they finished 7-6 and six that year. A win over Florida State got them above 500. Florida State was a top five team as Bush has a hole. Down the hatch to about the 13 for five or six. And Louisville last year led the country in yards per carry just under six yards per attempt. Outstanding offense last season with the left-handed quarterback who's a senior now. Now the thing about LaFleur that I want to get back to is that you're talking about a guy who nobody wanted. He had to send out tapes to 15 schools, and only Louisville was interested. He's had to hold off highly celebrated guys now two years in a row. That doesn't make you feel wanted. Rob hands for Bush. And down the 15-yard line. I make that the 10-yard line. The blue line attack is going to be very close to the marker. Rob, why are you so concerned about how people feel? 
hey, you got to have a leader on your team. And LaFour led that offense last year, 35 points a game. He did everything you could ask of a quarterback. And then even before he gets to camp, he's told his job is in jeopardy by a hot shot freshman. He's not. He's told that the job is in competition. Thank you for your great performance last year. Now, you've got to win it again this year like all other 21 starters. Louisville's going to have to call time. But guys, if you're Stefan LaForce, even though you're told by your coach that you've got the job, you know it's in the back of his mind. Especially when Brian Brom comes into the game and drives the team down the field. Third down and one for Louisville at the Kentucky 10. When we come back. Back on campus in Louisville, Kentucky. The Cardinals and the Wildcats are scoreless, but Louisville with a third down and one. On the Kentucky 10, this is the 12th play of a drive led by true freshman quarterback Brian Brom. Started on their 31. And Brom's going to throw. And he completes it to Gates at the five yard line, threw him in double coverage, but it still was completed, a six yard gain, and a fresh set of downs at the five. You can see that the game slows down for him. That's what the coaches told us. He did not get flustered by the pressure here. Watch him keep his composure, and then he makes a nice throw on the run. You know what I like is that he knows who he's playing against. Number nine, Darrell White, is a linebacker. And that linebacker is the one that had double coverage. The ball sailed right by White's head because he didn't wasn't accustomed to coverage. It was a great job by the quarterback to see that. We talked about LaFour's ability to run. Brom showing he has good feet. Pips to Gates. Touchdown Louisville! Watch the block, they'll get out that way. Shelton just really goes in and cleans things up out there, and the speed for Gates takes care of the rest of it. You know what, Gates blocked for Shelton earlier, now you've got Shelton blocking for Gates, and Gates is the fastest of all these three, the best able to run that outside play. Arthur Carmody's extra point, and Louisville strikes first. Lionel Gates, who had 11 touchdowns in 2003, gets the first of 04 for the Louisville Cardinals. Ryan Brom on his first collegiate drive goes four of five for 29 yards. And on that third down to set up the touchdown, he sees that it's a linebacker guarding Gates. And he knows the linebackers aren't very good at coverage. And so this ball's going to be in the air. And right now you see Gates at the right of your screen. He doesn't even look back for it. It goes right past his head. If that had been a, a defensive back, he would have turned back and picked it up. But Brom, knowing that it was a linebacker, took that risk and it was a good one. Dave, I like Brom's composure. Well, you said the key thing, the game slowed down for him. You don't expect that from an 18-year-old kid. <laughs> to the 20-yard line, Keenan Burton. Past the 40, a flag down, though. As Burton finally is stopped at the 45-yard line by Preston Smith. But again, a penalty flag down. 41-yard return that uh, will likely be negated. And it will be. Rich Brooks gets a good return, but instead, because of the penalty, Kentucky will not have good field position. Return, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Rich Brooks is new to this rivalry, but he is not unfamiliar with heated rivalries since he was part of that Oregon Oregon State Civil War rivalry up in the Northwest, Pacific Northwest. Well, he got a pretty good feel for it last year, guys, especially when uh, Louisville decided to call timeout and punch it in late in the game when the contest was already decided. Yeah, he, he didn't like that. We asked him about that, and he said, you have to ask those other guys. <laughs> <laughs> they line up Shane Boyd in the shotgun on first down at the Kentucky 25. True freshman Tony Dixon is into the game at running back. Boyd in trouble and got it away to his backup tight end Eric Scott 
And Scott picks up about eight yards. ABC's Monday Night Football officially opens its 35th anniversary season as the Super Bowl champs. The Patriots take on the Colts. It all happens Thursday night, September 9th at 8 Eastern on ABC Sports Championship Television. A rematch of the AFC title game, perhaps a preview of the AFC Championship game this year. Kentucky's done a nice job of keeping this close, but now they're in danger if they don't stop Louisville from getting up two scores. They'll be in danger of having to play catch-up. When you've got a young offensive line, a young quarterback, you absolutely do not want to get into that position. And so this is a very important drive for the Cardinals offensively. They've got to get down and make something happen because they've got to not allow Louisville to blitz like crazy from a position of points ahead. There's an eight-yard gain that's taken away because of a late hit on the left tackle by the left tackle, Michael Aitchison, and he just got pulled from the game. And uh, talking to him. Rich Brooks went right to him because he's hurting his team right now. They were getting out to midfield area, and now they're backed up a bit. Ernie Palaio, a junior out of Riverside, California, will come into the game with left tackle. Second down and 16 for Kentucky. Well, Kentucky just doesn't have the weapons that Louisville does if the Cardinals were to get ahead by two or three scores. Well, they do have an advantage outside with the receivers because of the height of their receivers and because they have good speed out there, but they don't have the quarterback skills to really be in second and 16, second and 18, and be effective or be behind late in the ball game, as you mentioned. And they, they don't have the offensive line skills to be second and 18 and behind and pick up all those blitzes reliably. We don't mean to pile on, but they also don't have a running back that can maybe make a guy miss on second and 18 and pick up seven or eight yards and get you back to more manageable third down. That, that's probably piling on. <laughs> Boyd slings that one that's incomplete, trying to hit Scott Mitchell. Instead, brings up third down and long. That would have got Kentucky back towards, or at least closer anyway, to the original line of scrimmage. And you can see the struggle between what Louisville wants to do defensively and what Kentucky wants to do offensively. Louisville wants to keep Boyd in the pocket and make him a pocket passer. Kentucky, on the other hand, they want to get him out of the pocket, get him on the move, and let him use his athleticism to make plays. Boyd last year completed under 35% of his passes. But remember, at one point, Guy Morris, then head coach at Kentucky, thought he was better than Jared Lorenz and started him as a freshman in 2001. Boyd eludes the sack, going deep for Burton. Knocked away at midfield by Kerry Rhodes and William Gay, both into the play. But what a throw by Boyd. Under pressure, on the move, and it gets through there all the way to the very last, and it gets knocked away by Rhodes. But look at the pressure that Boyd is under, and look what he does. He keeps his eyes downfield, he keeps his eyes on his receivers, and he throws it on the run, takes the hit. Now watch this ball come in, right of your screen, number 19, that's Burton. It almost gets there, but two guys knock it away, and I'll tell you what, it's not a completion, but Shane Boyd has got to feel good about that. Anthony Burton to punt again for Kentucky. Montrell Jones waits for it. And another good kick, but returnable for Jones. Jones to the 48-yard line for about 12 yards. Late flag flies in. So penalty on Louisville. Turn. Lock it back. 25 red. 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. That penalty on Antoine Harris. Let's check in with Dave. All right, Dave, thanks so much. Trainers on both sides are being very careful today about cramps because it is so hot. One reason, it's field turf here at Louisville. It's the second year they've used this surface. Now, there's a rubber and sand base inside. If you dig your hands in there, this all absorbs the heat, so it is very hot on the field. Some of the trainers stuck a thermometer in this surface before the game. It was 120 degrees on the field, but there is a breeze, so beyond the surface, it's not so bad, guys. And imagine, Dave, if that was artificial turf, how hot it would be on the field. That's one of the benefits of field turf, not as hot as the artificial stuff. First down on the Louisville 38. And Brahm is still in the game at quarterback. And Shelton gets the call on the running play. And Shelton carries a couple of Kentucky players into the 42. 
Sweet P. Burns, who wasn't supposed to be playing every single down because of a knee injury, has been out there a lot, made the tackle on that play. He's got three stops already in the game. Well, the disadvantage for Burns is that he doesn't have a whole lot of depth behind him, whereas Louisville has a lot of depth at running back. They can platoon them, and they've talked about that heat, 120 degrees on that field turf. What's worse is that that retains moisture, and it throws up humidity. All I know is that once you get a cramp during a game in heat like this, you just cannot get rid of it. You're pretty much done. It'll keep coming back. Empty backfield for Brom on second and five. And Brom gets drilled and loses it. Brom gets it back, though. There were two white shirts around him. Jarrell White drilled Brom, but he gets the ball back. Well, as a freshman, you usually only see things very narrowly on a field. As you get older and more experienced, you see things more broadly. Here, he can only see in one direction. He doesn't hear or feel the pressure coming from his right side. Well, he's got J.R. Russell to the left. That's his best receiver. He knew that's where he wanted to go based on his pre-snap read, and so he locked in on it. Two sacks already by Kentucky. Third down and 14 for Brown. in motion. Wildcats rush four. Screen play to Gates. Good grab at the 30. And Gates still going to be way short of the first down. Taken down to the 39 by Antoine Huffman. So Louisville will have to punt the ball away. And as you can see, there's a different game plan when Brom is in there. Defensively, they bring more pressure. They try to get in a long situation and then force him to read coverages there. And going to the screen pass was a good call in that situation and avoided a pick. And Kentucky coach Rich Brooks is a sneaky, sneaky old salt because he spent all day in our conference call telling us about how there won't be any difference in the defensive game plan. And lo and behold, it's hugely different. Listen, I got to tell you, you can't, can't believe everything coaches tell you to me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That, that's, that, that breaks my heart. Moody trying to angle it inside the 20. Beautiful kick. And a fortuitous bounce. Down at the 6. 53 yards on the park by Moody. Kentucky will take over. So poor field position again for Kentucky, but the Wildcats only down 7. you by Jeep. Trail rated capability only in a Jeep 4x4. And the Punisher DVD in stores on September 7th. Louisville with a 3-1 to one advantage in total yards, but just a 7-0 lead. However, Kentucky is backed up after a 54-yard punt. Looked like one of those bananas you try to kick in soccer on the corner kick. They kick bananas in soccer? You know what I mean. Right. Are you sure? First down at the seven. And Boyd with a quick drop. And slings it up to Jared Parker. Not much. Robert McCune on the tackle as we check in once again with Reese. Well, guys, the number 44 carries great significance to Syracuse. Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Larry Sanka, Floyd Little. I don't think 44 is going to be remembered for today. This is Jerome Brooks of Purdue going into the house and making it 44-0. Syracuse down to Purdue. Yeah, not the type of 44 that Orange fans wanted to see, of course. And there's the uh, total yards we talked about earlier. Second and ten. They go three wide. Boy to throw again. And he's got a man just out of the yard stretch down to Jared Parker. Two wide. Third down and long. Shane Boyd, a senior from Lexington, Kentucky, taking over for Jared Lorenzen, the all-time leading passer in Kentucky. There are the numbers. One of those numbers probably a little yeah. skewed. Yeah, let's, let's just get rid of that right there. And why don't we put something like 305? <laughs> yeah, that's probably better. He hasn't been 285 since he was 11. <laughs> but Floyd, he is such a smart quarterback, and he is so athletic that you, you like to see him in that Kansas State offense. Boyd, four out of nine passing for 22 yards. Kentucky just one of five and third down. They got to get 10 yards here to convert. Boyd has time. Pass perhaps deflected at the line. 
Kentucky will have to punt from its end zone. He's not going to be the quarterback who throws for a high percentage. He's going to run, and he's going to make the big throw for you, the big catch. But he's also going to make good decisions. That time he saw safety JT Haskins come up to the right side of his line, pulled out, called an audible to get the running back to block him. Now, it didn't succeed in terms of the physical execution, but what a great decision by Boyd to change the blocking scheme. Keep in mind, guys, Louisville blocked five punts last year, including one in this game, but they don't get it this time, even though the punter went down and the flag flies. Jones at the 40. Stood up at the 38, and again, a penalty flag down in the end zone. Anthony Thornton, the punter, was hit after the ball left his foot. So a huge penalty because that keeps Louisville's potent offense off the field, maybe for the rest of the half. It's a 15-yarder. There you see. And maybe a little bit of acting there. Well, it's enough acting, though. I'm not sure he got it. It doesn't matter, though, because the fact that he got under his legs, that's the key. Uh, Whoa! It's afterwards. It's, there it is. It's the excessive or extracurricular activity after the play that you sometimes get in rivalry games that can be kind of chippy. Well, that was chippy. That was a chip right to the jaw. Punters don't like it when defenders block them after the kick. And he already was knocked to the ground. I'm sure he wanted a flag there, didn't get it. And then they went and blocked him on top of it. Now they're inside his head, and I think that's what they're looking for. And Petrino is preaching composure. Kentucky coaches really like true freshman running back Tony Dixon. He's getting as much time as the two veteran running backs they have. And here's his first carry. And actually it was a fake, and Boyd kept it. And picked up about five or six yards to the 20, 70-yard line. Another tackle by McCune, his fifth. There you go, once again, it's not the action on the kicker. That was not roughing the kicker there. Actually, he actually enough. flags it. That was he enough. does, he threw the flag on that one. I don't get that one because it didn't look like he really got it. That was enough. Then Antoine Sharp gave him some extra and kind of got him under the jaw as well. It almost could have been either one. Yeah, but he threw the flag on the, the dance, the act in the end zone. Should have been on the late bump by Sharp. Second and four. Boy steps up, eludes a sack, finally goes down as he gets back near the line of scrimmage. Another play made by Robert McHugh. Let's go back to this play. Is this roughing the kicker? Well, you know, it I think looks it like he barely touched him, but you do have to allow the kicker to come down. To come There's down. the flag. Yeah. And because he didn't come down cleanly, that's why he had to throw it. But now look at this. Bang, up in the chin. And yeah. so really, they could have called either one. No, that's okay. That, that's a block. Shitty. That's a legal no, block. It's, okay. it's a block unless you get him under the chin. But it was called on the original because of what you said, Rod. He wasn't allowed to come down cleanly. Yeah, I didn't think that he'd actually stepped on him. I thought he'd actually kind of acted his way out of that. But on that replay, it looked to me like he did touch him a little bit. Big play for Kentucky. Try to keep that clock moving. Just one of six on third down. Louisville showing blitz. Here they come. And Boyd rolling out. Back across the middle to his backup tight end, Scott, for the first down and more to the 41 yard line. 13 yard pickup. Nice run and throw by Shane Boyd. And another smart decision. He wanted to go outside to Burton right here, but Burton is going to be held all the way down the field. It's not seen, it's not called, and Boyd does a smart thing. There's a hold, you can see it, but Boyd decides he's not going to go out there to that guy because he's being held. Good vision by Boyd in that play. From the 41. There is the first carry for true freshman Tony Dixon. Picks a hole and gets up to the 48-yard line. About seven yards on that carry. And the running game starting to work for Kentucky here in the second quarter. Tony Dixon, a freshman, he, he was a cornerback coming in. Corner, defensive back. And they switched him over to running back just because he had such amazing burst. They wanted to see what he could do in the backfield. And 
nobody could tackle him, nobody could catch him when they had him in fall camp. So they're trying to give him a shot out here at game experience, see if the Louisville Cardinal defense can catch him. Dixon from Parrish, Alabama, holds the state record, had 43 touchdowns in one year. Second and three. And this time, the freshman fumbles the ball, and Louisville has it at the 45-yard line. Brent Johnson forced the fumble and recovered it for the Cardinals. They've been running a replay and then sometimes an off-tackle play. And you always wonder about the exchange on those plays. This is a simple handoff. He got it cleanly. He just didn't secure the ball as it got poked out of there. And Montavious Stanley, number 92, sticks his hand in before Dixon can get it. Now look at number 92. He reaches his right hand across. And while Dixon is looking at the guys coming into his face, from the side, Stanley pulls it out. My coach is reminding him that they still need him. He can't go in the tank now. He'll get another chance as LaForce is back into the game. And he fires to Russell. Penalty flag down. That might be against Russell for pushing off. Uh, the safety, Mike Williams. J.R. Russell, senior from Tampa, Florida. 75 catches last year. And that is against Russell. And that's the matchup that Russell wanted. Get him matched up on either a linebacker or a safety. And he's usually going to just eat them up. On the offense, number three, 15 yards. Repeat, first down. And he shouldn't have to push off on a safety unless he's being really held. No, but wide receivers are good at little things like that. Cornerbacks are good at, as we look at Williams, cornerbacks are good at countering it. But safeties are not good at countering it. That's why J.R. Russell tried to pull that little trick on him. the official play traffic cut. I'm not certain about that because Russell goes right into Williams. Williams was squared up in front of him. He was. That's his contact. Yeah, he looked like he was a little bit to the side. I think uh, it could have gone either way. So on first and 25, LaForce rolls out. Throwing on the run incomplete. Good coverage by Abdullah. He was all over Tiger Jones, the intended receiver. Abdullah's I'm, second team all SEC last year. Dave, I'm impressed with how hard Kentucky is playing. You can, you can see that there is a lot more effort than we saw in this team on tape from the last year's game. They, they seem to be flying around. Maybe it's the intensity of the rivalry, but they are certainly playing hard today. Well, part of it is that they're accustomed now to the coaching staff. Anytime you get a new staff in, it takes a while for the team to learn to trust them, to learn what's expected of them. Kentucky now in the second years of the Brooks regime. There. On second and 25, it's a draw play. Gates to midfield. Line flies in as Gates is taken down at the 48-yard line. We'll hash it out when we come back. First, let's go to Reese Davis to tell us what's coming up at halftime. Hey, Dave, Trev, and Mark are with me. The Orange got crushed. We'll talk about that. You're seeing a freshman quarterback. We'll talk about some others. There's one Wildcat who's known for singing the blues. I wonder what position he plays. Could it be offensive line, running back? You have to stay tuned and have to find out. You mentioned quarterbacks. The quarterbacks you're talking about, Reese, are freshmen at Tennessee. How well they play later on today? Yeah, we'll have Tennessee and UNLV coming up later. We'll see you at halftime. All right, guys, we've got a freshman quarterback in this game, true freshman Brian Brom, who led Louisville to its only score of the first half. That's the only score in the game. Penalty against the Cardinals. What number, Paul? Holding number 76 on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the flag. Repeat, second down. That's right guard Kirk Quarterman in his first year as a starter. Nose guard Lamar Mills lift off the field after that last play, number 45. He's one of the best in the SEC. He's taking on the block. Let's see what happens to him. Oh, he just gets completely landed on. Jason Spitz goes about 308 pounds, and that was an awkward way to fall. Looks like he got the wind knocked out of him. He'll be back. Eight penalties combined in this game. They run the draw again to Gates. Good ankle tackle, 37 by Chad Anderson. So about seven yards in the pickup, it'll bring up third down and about an eight iron. And you've got to like the way this first half has gone so far for Kentucky. A minute 35 to go, they're only down by seven. Nobody gave them a chance to be anywhere near this high-powered Louisville offense. And if they can get off of this field at no worse of a score than this going into halftime, you've got to like their chances coming out in the second half. Do you hit your eight iron that well? Probably more like a six iron. Yeah, I was going to say, that's kind of long for you. 
I don't know. I got two kids. I never get to play golf. <laughs> Rich Brooks is playing a lot of golf, but he says his game is not that good anymore. I think he probably stopped with uh, the work that they have to do at Kentucky. I mean, you look at uh, the fact that they only have 73 scholarships. Certainly tough for Kentucky. Welcome back to Louisville. Stephon LaForce is sacked on third down and 28 by B.J. Parsons. He's the backup to Sweet P. Burns. He makes the play on LaForce. You guys surprised at all with what you've seen here out of Louisville offensively in this first half? They're well, supposed to be one of the best in the country. Yeah, I, I, I am surprised, and I, I have to wonder a little bit if if Jeff changing quarterbacks up is kind of knocked off the rhythm. Le, Lafour is not playing the way he did last year yet. Brom has been impressive, but they've also made mistakes, penalties and the like, and they just don't seem quite to have the rhythm that they had at times last season. Part of that is Kentucky's defense, though. It's a lot better than people give them credit for. They've got very strong and active defensive linemen that have been putting some pressure on LaFord just as we saw that sack there. And what happened, I think, with Braun is that as they tried to blitz him, it depleted the coverage in the backfield. And Braun was able to hit that depleted coverage and hurt it. How would he do if they laid back in coverage like they have with before? I don't know. Yeah, and, and Braun is playing well. I just, I don't see the same kind of performance yet. Out of the well, Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator for Kentucky, has been around the block a few times. He was a head coach at LSU, won an SEC title when he was there, was a linebacker's coach with the Steelers for six seasons, and he's got nine returning starters in there. Their defense last year was the best in terms of scoring defense in 10 years at Kentucky. Well, and he also knows um, Bobby Petrino. He coached against him in the NFL. Petrino was with the Jaguars, and Archer was with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and now, Archer knows defense. He also coached with our Bill Curry on that Kentucky staff several years ago. So he's, he's a good coach, and he knows this system that Petrino likes to run. And he knows that the best way to counter that system is not to be too complicated on defense. One of the things he told us in our meeting, went to great length about it, was that rather than go into multiple blitzers and multiple defensive sets and disguises, he wanted to make it relatively simple because he knew that Louisville was going to be complex in what they would try to do. So his players wouldn't have to think so much as just fly around. Kentucky will get the football. We'll not have any timeouts left. We'll have a minute and 22 seconds to work with. So far, Brent Moody, the Louisville punter, is averaging 54 and a half yards per boot. This is not a good one. But another favorable bounce, and it goes through the wickets of Drake Davis. And Kentucky's going to have to start from its 12. 51-yard punt by Moody. Kentucky will get the ball back. 1-11 to go in the opening half. 7-0 LaVille. They hand it off to Alexi Legengi. He only gets uh, three or four in that play. So maybe Kentucky is uh, going to settle for going into the half down just seven nothing. And I think they should. It's a hot day. Their defense has been out on the field. You're only down seven. You're backed up. Take it in. Don't want to make a mistake down here, but Boyd is going to pass on this play. And he's going deep for Holt. Overthrown and complete. Good coverage by Antoine Harris. Amobi Okoye, guy you guys talked about earlier, put pressure on Boyd that time. The question about Okoye, you talk about a 17-year-old. What if he turns out to be really special and he's an 18-year-old junior? Could he go to the NFL? The NFL rule is three years removed from high school. He'd be an 18-year-old eligible for the NFL draft. And the NFL has always argued that you got to be, what, 2021 20, to be strong enough? Well, Larry Fitzgerald is the youngest player in the NFL this year at 20 years old. But uh, he had that year of prep school. But Gangy takes it out to the 22, very close to the first down marker. So they'll stop the clock. Measure. We're seeing a lot of different guys get the football at running back for Kentucky in this first half. Well, they're trying to find a guy that can that can step up and be the man. But this guy here, Okoye, 
even if he does possibly go to the NFL, the difference between receiver and Fitzgerald and defensive tackle is massive. When you're a defensive tackle, you're going to have 28-year-old men that all weigh 320 pounds leaning on you for 70 plays a game. Yeah. And so he is a great NFL prospect, in my opinion, because of his body type. He's very, very squatty, very difficult to, to knock out of there. He's almost like a bowling ball with a head in that regard. But at the same time, uh, he needs some time to finish growing up. Bowling ball with a head? Bowling ball with a head. That means he's hard to get under him, hard to drive him out of there because he's got a really good defensive tackle, NFL-style body. He just needs more years on him. 315 pounds. Who knows? Uh, a couple years, he could be Ted Washington size. Washington, the former partner. Boyd's pass nearly picked off. And a flag down. Boyd got hit late. William Gay nearly intercepted the pass, but Boyd was drilled after he got rid of the ball. And it's fortunate for Kentucky that they pick up this first down because as a defensive player on the sideline on a hot day like this, you don't want to go back out there when you've made the stops. Defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Five penalties now against Louisville in the first half. That was Marcus Jones, the sack leader from last year. They've done a good job on him in this game. Yeah, they really have. He had 10 sacks last year, 17 tackles for a loss. You've been able to see anything on the line? The reason why they've been able to keep him out of the backfield? The reason why is that he has to watch out for Shane Boyd taking off and running just like this. See, he breaks contain. The reason he breaks contain is because Bobby LaFue came inside to maintain his rushing lane. That's why we don't see Marcus Jones getting as many sacks because he's got to be more disciplined with the lanes he takes to rush. Take a look at the left side of your screen. Check the right side of your screen now. You're gonna see number 48 coming inside right there. And that allows Boyd to get outside. He tried to throw a big time spin inside for his pass rush, but it worked out that it allowed the escape route. That's why we don't see Jones, because Jones is playing more disciplined. Boyd just three for his last 10. Second and 16. Second and 10 rather. And Boyd almost got hit by Dumerville, didn't see him. <laughs> and then Dumerville gets crushed, and Boyd is going deep, and Burton's down there. But it's picked off, underthrown, and Carrie Rhodes intercepts. Now this becomes a recess play after the pressure. You see the pressure there? Watch your quarterback spin out that way. After Boyd does his spin out, now all the receivers are breaking off routes and trying to go deep and get near where he can do something to and get the ball to him. Oh, and, and poor Elvis Doomerville, three offensive linemen light him up. I'm sure he's wondering where the rest of those red jerseys are. <laughs> Not a bad play there by Boyd. Might as well throw it up. It's the end of the half. See if maybe you get a deflection into the arms of your receiver. That's the second turnover by Kentucky. And Louisville will close off the half of the running play to Gates. And Gates up to about the 34. 18-yard pickup. Now Bobby Petrino thought that maybe after that first drive, Louisville would be up by a two or three scores. But it's 7-0 Louisville at halftime. Let's join Reese, Trev, and Mark for the ESPN College Football Halftime Report. All right, we said early on that this series has been full of surprises despite the fact that Louisville has won four of the last five. Kentucky hanging in there, down by just seven points. Wildcats don't have the same type of firepower. Are you surprised to see them this close? Well, no, not really. I mean, I, I look at this game for all the talk about Louisville's offense, and rightfully so. They've got a lot of talent there. I've been impressed with Louisville's defense, getting lots of pressure on the quarterback, stopping the running game. Kentucky can't get anything going. And then on the other side of the ball, Louisville reestablished the line of scrimmage and get the running game going, take some pressure off those young quarterbacks, Mark. I look at the Kentucky defense. Mike Archer's done a great job with this defense. And you look at the SEC this season, I think their defense is always going to keep them in football games. As long as the offense does not turn the ball over, they've got two turnovers turnovers in the first half. They put the defense in bad position, but the defense has only given up seven points for Kentucky. So we've still got a one touchdown game. I want to have a great second half ahead, and this is just the first half of a doubleheader on ESPN. Tennessee and UNLV later tonight. We'll talk about...
Tenth time in 11 years, Louisville and Kentucky have opened the season against one another. And the Cardinals lead this game at halftime, seven to nothing. Dave Pash alongside Rod Gilmore and Trevor Maddich. And a little bit of an inauspicious start for Louisville, guys. Even though the Cardinals lead, people here were talking as if they might be up three or four touchdowns at halftime. And it looked early like that might be the case. Louisville's really kind of struggled on offense. Penalties have hurt them. I think in the second half, the quarterback situation, they've got to deal with that a little bit. Brom has been great. LaFleur's has it. Only five passes thrown in the first half. Ain't they have to get him going? And if they do that and they feed their studs, they get the ball to Russell and then get it to Bush, they'll get something going in the second half. They tried to do that in the first half, though. And I give so much credit to Kentucky's defense because they expected it and they stopped it. Why does Louisville only have seven points? Two reasons. One, opening drive of the game, 79 yards. Fourth and goal on the one, Kentucky stuffed them for no points. Second reason, Louisville is only two of seven for third downs. Kentucky's defense is getting them off the field, and they're not doing it because Louisville is messing up. They're doing it because they're stopping them. You see the penalties there. They've hurt themselves, Louisville, six of them for 70 yards. That's our Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield first half stats. 182. First half uh, total yards for Louisville, just 87 for Kentucky. But again, 7-0 is the score. Cardinals in front. And Kentucky will start with the football. Louisville to kick off. Rob Zarilli from the 35. Keenan Burton at the 4. And Burton through a hole. The kicker to beat. And he makes the play. Tom Flannery, the kicker, keeps Keenan Burton from scoring a touchdown. Still a 44-yard return. Well, Burton gets a lane to the left side. You'll see it from his angle. That's the, the, the lane he sees. He gets the blocking inside and then makes a nice move outside. And special teams, a big plus for Kentucky this year. Last year with a blocked punt, a drop snap, special teams killed him. To open up the second half with this kind of a play builds on the momentum from the first half that the defense has given them. Best starting field position of the game for Kentucky, thanks to that man, Keenan Burton. From the 47-yard line, Kentucky has not crossed midfield yet. Here's Holt on the end around. Louisville not fooled. Game of about three on the play. Check in with the fourth member of our crew on the sideline, Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, one of the big question marks, Louisville preseason camp with head coach Bobby Petrino. How much would Brian Brom, his prized game freshman recruit, play quarterback against Stefan LaFour? As I asked him at halftime, Coach, who will play more in the second half? He said, I don't have that plan quite made yet, so he's keeping it close to the vest. Defensively, very pleased. Overall, thought a couple of penalties. Not the best mental decision some of his players could make. We'll talk about Rich Brooks, Dave, after this play. We'll see if Louisville uh, can keep it going on defense, Dave. Second down and eight. Kentucky's been running ball a little bit better since uh, midway point of the second quarter. But this time, Arliss Beach has nowhere to go. Strung out, Brent Johnson made the tackle. Dave? As for Rich Brooks, the head coach at Kentucky, very pleased with Shane Boyd's play at quarterback in the first half. He wants to see him checking down to the right play a little bit faster, maybe get to the snap faster. Not audible in quite as much, so the play drags on. It gives Louisville's defense more time to set. Defensively, again, avoiding penalties and digging in. I asked him, who would you rather face, LaForce or Brian Brown? He said, I really don't care. And Dave Boyd did miss some receivers in the first half that were open, but he's a senior, and I'm sure after... Talking with the coaching staff. Maybe he'll be able to hit some of those uh, receivers. Go through his progressions and make some plays. The numbers on the two starters in the first half. Play fake. And Boyd just got rid of it. And it's picked off by Rhodes. No white shirts. Touchdown Louisville. Second interception for Rhodes. Marcus Jones put pressure on Boyd. We talked about him making better decisions. That was not a good one. That was reminiscent of the start of last year's game. His first pass picked off. Second half, this game, his first pass picked off.
Arthur Carmody on for the PAT. 14 up in Louisville. Not the start to the second half that Kentucky wanted. Harry Rhodes with a second interception. Maybe Shane Boyd doesn't wish he was back on campus. Second team conference USA performer Marcus Jones, who had 10 sacks last year, puts pressure on Shane Boyd, the Kentucky quarterback. Throws an interception. It's returned 55 yards for a touchdown. Kentucky head coach Rich Brooks, Rich Brooks, after excellent field position to start, was hoping for better results. But uh, that's the third turnover of the day by Kentucky. Three straight drives have ended in turnovers for UK. Trey Davis will take it out about four yards deep. Up to the 21, and he is level there. Marcus Jones very disciplined. He's going to rush straight up field so that Boyd can't go outside. When Boyd turns around, he sees instead of green grass, a very disciplined pass rush lane from Jones. And then you see right here, Kerry Rhodes, he's just lurking. He's in down low from that free safety spot, and he's a man free, and he's playing the quarterback's eyes. He sees it perfectly, and there he goes off to the races. A pick six. 55 yards. See how Shane Boyd responds. First down at the Kentucky 22. It's a running play, and only about a yard or two for Arliss Beach. Game tackled by the Cardinal defense. That, that, that play by Kerry Rhodes could be devastating for Kentucky unless Boyd gets comfortable again in a hurry. You have to think about the impact on him of throwing a pick six last year and then throwing another one in this ball game. Can he overcome that mentally? But that's why you run it up the middle of the first play back to tell the Louisville defense, hey, we're not going to start slinging the ball. You still have to defend the run. They say that Beach's knee went down to the line of scrimmage, so no game, second and ten. And Boyd changing the play. Boyd with a quick drop. Burton tried the uh, leaping catch, but could not pull it in. Good coverage by Dominique Dunbar. But a flag down. Got him with the hold. I assume they will take this and push him farther back. Have a Big Ten crew for this Conference USA slash SEC hey, hey, matchup. Hey, hey. Number 62 on the offense. That center Matt McCutcheon, former walk-on, making his first start here in this game. He came over from Navy, transferred from Navy. Didn't play there. He had a stinger in his neck. Navy doctors told him he shouldn't play football again. He thought that he could, so he transferred. From the 12 yard line, second and 20. Boy, here comes a Poirier, and they get the screen to Beach, and he is thrown down. Brandon Johnson with a huge hit on Beach. And our Navy man, Matt McCutcheon, the center, number 62, went out and tried to get him. This being his first start, he wasn't used to the speed of the game. And so Brandon Johnson gets there first. Now watch the center. Right in the middle, number 62. He's going to start to go out to the right of your screen, but he can't get there. Brandon Johnson gets there first. Kentucky three of nine on third down. Boyd, pressure's on, got it away, and almost threw another interception. That might be intentional grounding. There wasn't a receiver over there. No, and he was obviously not outside the tackle box, but no penalty flag down. Yeah, they caught a break from the officials on that one. That would have been a safety. To get him settled down. Well, it's intentional grounding if he's in the pocket, which he is, and there's no receiver near where he throws it, which there is not. 
The officials must have thought he was trying to throw it farther, and the defense stopped him. He runs into his own offensive lineman, throws the ball, and gets squashed. Man. Well, that ball did cross the line of scrimmage, which no doubt saved him on that possible grounding call. Short kick. Jones breaks a tackle at the 45. But can't slip that one at the 41. Louisville with excellent field position and a two-touchdown lead early third quarter. ESPN's College Football Sunday. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Home of the new Big Bell value menu. And the next Ford Super Duty. Tougher, stronger, smarter. Those horses go a little bit slower than uh, the ones that people usually see in this town. Great crowd here for college football, though. Sold out Papa John's Cardinal Stadium and the home team with a two touchdown lead. An interstate rivalry that uh, is renewed in the season opener for the 10th time in 11 years. Sweet key bangs put pressure on the quarterback, and LaForce pass is incomplete. Sweet Pea Burns looked like one of those Kentucky, Kentucky Derby horses the way he got in there. He shot out of a cannon just about. But his nickname is Sweet Pea. Now, when you're a big muscles rippling stud defensive end and you relish your nickname of Sweet Pea, you are very secure. Well, who's going to mess with you when you're that big? Well, that's a very good point. <laughs> Johnny Cash could have sang a boy named Sweet Pea just as easily. At media day, he wore a suit with pink shoes. Very secure. Ivory colored suit. <laughs> and was named best dressed. I don't know who were the judges on that play or on that uh, decision there as Eric Shelton gets a couple of yards. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, guys, we talked about Sweet P. Burns. The coaches on the Kentucky staff say he's a great tone setter in practice. They really rely on Sweet P to knock someone backwards to get the whole team going. Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator, was a linebacker's coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers for seven years. Tells us a guy named Greg Lloyd played that same role, a spark plug and workouts who motivated everyone around him. On the field, guys, on field level, you can see he's doing that again today for the Kentucky D. Burns, a student of the game, spends a lot of time in the film room, comes in on Sundays to sit down with the coaches before they present the film to the team the next day. Completed pass to Montrell Jones. And it's a first down for Louisville, 11-yard pickup. Well, Dave's right about Sweet Pea, and, and especially what he does in practice for the team, because young players need to have a bell cow. They need to know what the intensity in practice should be, and he's been injured so much this fall. He's only been back to practice, really, the last several days that they've missed his leadership in setting the tone for the young players. I've just never seen a big guy wear pink shoes. Come on, Trevor's got some in his closet. I don't know. I haven't seen Mike Golix. <laughs> 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 Not much of the carry by Michael Bush. But forward progress to the 25. So a gain of three. And Louisville handing it off a lot. So LaFour is not able to add yet to those seven attempts. I think it's important for LaFour to, to consummate this drive or another drive to get on the board. Right now he's behind Brom in terms of touchdown scored by the offense. He hasn't put one in the end zone yet. Touchdown for the offense scored on a run and play by Lionel Gates when Brown was the quarterback. And he drove Louisville down the field. Here's Bush off right tackle and springs forward to the 23 for about two. So third down and four or five coming up. Here's Brian Baum from doing his thing. Not a great runner, but he shows you he's not afraid to pull it down. Only had really one mishap in the first half, and that was not seeing the rush come the other way. But look at this throw here. Nice throw, nice understanding who the defenders are and what you can get away with. From a true freshman, USA Today National Offensive Player of the Year. And Louisville will not get the first down as Tinge is stopped at the 20-yard line by safety Mike Williams. What do you do if you're Bobby Petrino? It's going to be fourth down in about a yard and a half or two. They've already gone for it twice on fourth down, converted once. Well, this is a long field goal, and I really think they should go for this. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, you're already up 14. You've got a shot to put them away right now, and, and kicking a field goal wouldn't put them away. 
See, I would. I'd kick a field goal just to keep adding the points on. Your defense is controlling things. Make it harder. They already stopped you on the fourth down once before. But they're not going to stop him here. As Shelton picks his way to the 16. A four-yard game. And they move the sticks for the Louisville offense. We talk so much, guys, about a potential high-scoring affair. Not a lot of defense, but obviously with... Uh, Eight and a half to go in the third. They've only had two scores and only one by an offense. I'm surprised that Louisville hasn't put more points on the board yet. That that is surprising to me. Before is going to run, and he's wrapped up from behind by Darrell White at the 11-yard line. So about five on the carry for Lafleur, who is the. Uh, Top rusher for a single season ever by a Louisville quarterback. Did that last year with over 400 yards. Yeah, and this high-powered offense hasn't scored, and it surprises me as well, Rob, but I think Mark May was right in pregame that Kentucky's defense is a lot better than people give them credit for, and, and you've got to give them credit for slowing down this offense, but this is a huge series to keep them from going up 21-0. Sweet P. Burns, you just saw there. Played a lot, had an injury. They thought he'd get about 15 to 20 snaps. He had that in the first half. And he almost made a play there on Bush. Still, Bush is taken down to the 10, short of the first down. So to bring up third down and a few. And you know, Kentucky wanted Michael Bush when he was coming out of high school, Mr. Football. They recruit so many of the same players here. They thought he could have wound up being the quarterback over there at Kentucky. We might even see Bush on defense. Dave Ryan talked about that at the beginning of the game. 114 rushing yards for Louisville. And they're not going to get anywhere near the marker. As Shelton is taken down to the line of scrimmage. Chad Anderson and Ray Fontaine team up to make that stop for Kentucky. Do you go for it again or do you kick the field? I think you go for three. I two and a half yards. I, yeah, I think it's the same concept. It's two and a half yards. But I'd still go for it again. I would. And then you've got them pinned back. Their offense is going nowhere. Yeah, Keep I, the pressure on. I'd still kick it. I would have kicked it the last time. I'd kick it this time. Yeah. Get 17 points with three scores. You've got a lot of pressure on that offense. 26-yard attempt by Arthur Carmody. His first ever field goal attempt. And it's blocked by Kentucky. Second time today, the Louisville drives down the field and comes up with nothing. Opening weekend, we have seen so many issues in the kicking game. Sometimes it's about mistakes. Sometimes it's just great athletic ability. And this one is not a mistake. This is athletic ability. Watch DeWalt, number eight. Watch him get up here. He's 6'6 wow. to begin with. Wow. And he's a 220-pound freshman who's going to play on the Kentucky basketball team as well. Great block by Linnell DeWalt. Keeps it 14-0 Louisville. Well, Linnell DeWalt, number eight, is the guy you want here, not just because he's 6'6", but part of his recruitment to Kentucky was contingent on Tubby Smith offering him a spot on the basketball team as well. Shane Boyd to throw, and it completes underneath to the 30-yard line. Arliss beats the tailback, picks up 11 yards. DeWalt led his high school basketball team to the Kentucky State Championship, and that's saying something in the state of Kentucky in high school as well. And so he's got incredible leaping ability. One of the reasons that he was so good in high school in basketball, one of the reasons he'll be allowed to play on one of the premier college programs in the country. Is a really tall receiving core for the Wildcats. Boyd, 7 of 18, 43 yards, two interceptions, but maybe that 11 yard pickup will give him a little confidence. They run the option, and Boyd keeps. And Boyd gets about four or five to the 36 yard line. Well, speaking of high school, let's get an update on high school football with Reese. All right, Dave, De La Salle, Concord, California, taking on Bellevue, Washington last night. De La Salle hadn't lost in 12 years, but they couldn't stop the wing T in J.R. Hasty. 39-20, Rod, the De La Salle reign is over, Rodney. The streak ends, a run of 151. Well, it had to end at some point. No, it didn't. <laughs> 
What, go to 200? Second and five of the 36, another option play, another keeper for Boyle. He runs into his own man, but still gets about 11 or 12. Jared Parker collides with Boyd, but it pinballs Boyd forward for uh, a first down. Let's check uh, in once again with Dave Ryan. Well, there Shane Boyd has been drafted twice by the Minnesota Twins. You mentioned earlier, both times said no thanks. He was a relief pitcher on the Kentucky baseball team this past year and can throw in the low 90s. The Twins use a 12th, 12th round draft pick on him, but he did not leave early. Consider signing the report to a low-level minor league team and return to Lexington for preseason camp. But guys, if football doesn't work out, if he can throw mid-90s, he'll play pro baseball somewhere sometime down the road. Absolutely. And, uh... Accuracy, obviously, a key in baseball. He hasn't been very accurate here today, but maybe he's heating up. Here he throws low, and the pass is incomplete. Trying for Burton, who was open, but the pass was uh, about three yards short. Well, on a pitcher's mound, you get to lean forward and throw it. He had to lean backward that time because Sherry Rhodes is putting the pressure on. That's why it was short. I do like the rhythm that they're starting to get into offensively now, Kentucky. Ron Hudson is throwing the ball on first down. He's coming back with some option, some lead option, speed option to get Boyd going on second down, trying to shorten the distance. I like the rhythm of the offense right now. Boyd does seem more comfortable rolling out as well. They're doing a lot of that. Second down and 10. Arliss Beach grabbed from behind and bumbled the ball. But now they're going to say he's down. Elvis Dumerville, who the coaches say, can't be blocked by the Louisville offense in practice, made the play. Well, that means a lot because their offensive line is one of the strongest offensive lines they've ever had here in Louisville. If they can't block him, this young offensive line, untested offensive line in Kentucky will have extra trouble. It's important for Boyd to convert a third and long. He's got to come up with a throw on third and long one of these times in order to get his team moving. It's on his shoulders. And Kentucky just three for ten on third down. They've only crossed midfield once, and that was earlier this quarter. Boyd has time. Then the pocket collapses, and down goes Boyd for a sack. Montavious Stanley with the sack for Louisville. And Brandon Johnson made this happen. Stanley got the hit, but Brandon Johnson forced him to bug out of the pocket. He came on a blitz on the right side. He's going to come right on the right, right here, and come to unblock number 97. And that's what allows actually Elvis Dumerville to make that sack. Elvis has not left the building. He is seated comfortably atop Shane Boyd. Yeah, I think that's pocket presence. I think he lacked it there. I don't think he had to move up into that thing. They'll share that sack. Stanley had him low. Dumerville had him high. And they'll put it away on fourth down. Jones to his right, and uh, the kick is short. It's a Kentucky player, and Louisville left to start inside the 20-yard line. Well, fans everywhere can make a difference on September 7th. It's simple. Wear your favorite team's apparel to work on September 7th. In exchange, each participant can make a donation of $5 or more to the V Foundation to benefit cancer research. Anyone can participate, company, schools, organizations, and individuals join ESPN and many other companies by declaring September 7th, Show Your Spirit Day. All right, so I'm wearing some cardinal and white on Tuesday. I'll be wearing some blue and white. BYU knocks off Notre Dame last night. I'd wear uh, orange for Syracuse, but not after a 44 nothing. No, no, no you, you just wear orange and put a 44 on. Very fun. <laughs> well, four is rolling out. Stays in bounds. Great block by his tight end. Adam McCauley springs the fours for about 13 yards. Sealed off Ray Fontaine for the fours to get some room. And this is a nice part. Ray Fontaine, a linebacker. McCauley, a brand new tight end. He's not used to playing number 45 because their starting tight end transferred to Georgia Tech. And so McCauley having to pick up the slack blocks an outstanding outside linebacker man for man in the open field. By the way, I found out Syracuse lost 51 nothing. So oh, well, we're at 51, 51 in Jersey. Yeah. First down of the Louisville 31. And penalty flags down some movement. Aben McCauley, the former walk-on, replaces Wayne Riles, who was to be the starter, but walked off the team. On the offense, number 45, five yards, remains first down. That was McCauley. 
You know, it was interesting talking to Bobby Petrino about quarterback play and about getting Brom here to Louisville. He says everything he does is to make the quarterback successful, that his practice is geared towards that. And he said he learned that several years ago by a different experience we'll talk about after this play. Michael Bush gets the call, and there's a huge hole. 35 and up to the 38, and flags fly at the 32. Antoine Huffman on the tackle for Kentucky. When Bobby Petrino was an assistant coach at Arizona State with Bruce Snyder, he said he was often frustrated in practice because everything was geared towards the tailback. The passing attack in practice was cut short, and he vowed that once he became a head coach, he would gear everything towards his quarterback, and that had a huge influence on Brom coming to Louisville to get prepared for the NFL. Still, first down. So penalty on Louisville. Well, in high school, a lot of these top high school players, and he was Offensive Player of the Year, USA Today, coming out of high school, Kentucky Mr. Football, they think about not just college, but ahead to the potential of the NFL. And if you're a top quarterback and you're recruited by a Tennessee and a Notre Dame and a Louisville, you've got to look at the scheme they're going to run. This is an NFL scheme. Brian Brom again, a true freshman. His brother Jeff, a quarterback coach. His brother Greg, director of football operations. Grew up here in Louisville. On the screen, it's Bush to the 30. Breaks a tackle. Finally cut down inside the 40-yard line by Warren Wilson as he saves a touchdown. 41-yard pickup for Bush. How versatile is Michael Bush? As a junior in high school, he was voted All-State at five positions. At Louisville, this is one of the positions they use him. Out of the backfield, swing pass. He's a big guy, about 250, but he's got really good feet. And they want to get that big size down there on the safeties to make him tackle him because he'll break tackles just like he did there. Later in the game, those little guys get tired. Bush, 240 pounds. They fake it to him. And LaFors has his tight end. And McCauley pulls it in at the 20 for a 16-yard game. The Kentucky coaches told us whenever Bush is in the game, he gets the ball. Not that time. And just watch the way LaFors is moving on the field. He looks a lot more confident. He looks a lot more fluid about what he's doing. I think he's finding his rhythm, the rhythm he didn't have in the first half. If you're Petrino, do you go back with Brom in the fourth quarter at some point? I would. I'd give him another series, but I'd like to have him throw some more. Oh, LaFors almost throws an interception. Miscommunication between he and Russell and Huffman should have picked it off. Rod, I wouldn't go back with Brom in the fourth quarter. I think you've got him his playing time. He's the young guy. He's the backup. Now's the time for your starter, LaFors, to really get solid and really get a rhythm. Even though this play ugh, almost picked off. Part of that reason is that he needs time to get used to his defensive or his receivers going against the full speed of defensive backs in the game. When you're down 14 up and, and you need a play, you have to come up with that interception as Bush takes it off right tackle for about three and 17. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Spiked a bit this morning after the Louisville Courier Journal newspaper came out. And one of the preview articles about several Mr. Footballs in Kentucky, you guys mentioned going to Louisville, not Kentucky. Kentucky coach Rich Brooks was quoted as saying Michael Bush isn't a starter, a heck of a player, but not the starter caliber player you'd want there. Michael Bush took exception to it, guys. He plans on talking to Rich Brooks about that quote after the game today. We'll see what happens. All right, Dave, and Bush is uh, not in the game on this play as LaForce rolls out and throws to the end zone. Touchdown! Wide open in the end zone, Roderick Clark. Justin Haydock is a linebacker, backup linebacker. He's the one that's supposed to have that corner. And he's not there. Everybody forgot. Clark needed one foot. He got both in. The PAT is good for Carmody. 21 to the ball. One of the outstanding things here, LaForge. His ability to throw on the run makes him so dangerous. Look at that thing. That's movement, that's perfect placement. And check that, that was not Haydock. I apologize to the Haydock family everywhere. That was Muhammad Abdullah. Haydock had a good good coverage on that. But Stefan LaFleur knows that was the right play on a broken scramble.
Watch the routes down into the end zone, down there. Now watch LaFleur when he comes out to the side, and you'll see the receiver stay deep to the end zone. And the tightrope on the end by the quarterback and also by Broderick Clark. Well, you can see LaFleur is tiptoeing the sideline as Clark was before Clark, who did not have a touchdown last year, pulls it in for Louisville. And on that drive, LaFleur is 3 of 4, 73 yards and a touchdown to Roger Clark. Flannery to kick it away. He saved a touchdown the last time he booted it. Rich Brooks team down three scores, just under a minute to go in the third. That drive took less than two minutes. Burton getting another chance to return. Cut down at the 14-yard line by J.T. Haskins. Kentucky will take over. So Clark's touchdown makes it 21 nothing. Once again, our fifth opening kickoff did. And Kentucky is going to have to come up with the scores in a hurry. And their running game isn't much of a threat anyway, but now Louisville knows they have to throw. Remember, in rivalry games, anything goes. Remember last year, the running up the score allegation against Louisville at the end of the ball game, the gratuitous touchdown? I don't have any doubt that Louisville, if given the opportunity, they will pile it on in the fourth quarter if they're way up. The two teams will meet again next year, but right now that's the last year in terms of the contract in which they'll play. Kentucky doesn't like playing this game this early in the season as Beach takes it for about 12 to the 25-yard line. But Louisville would love to play this game as the uh, season opener for years to come. And one of the things Louisville wants to do is expand their success last year when they were the number one offense in Conference USA to be the number one offense in the entire nation. And when you've got an opportunity to pile up some stats, I don't know that they won't take that opportunity. And this is their last season in Conference USA. They're heading to the Big East next season. Along with South Florida and Cincinnati in football, Mark Kent and DePaul are joining in basketball. And Brandon Johnson showing some speed, tracking down the running back Beach near the sideline of the 25-yard line. Minimal game for Beach. Brandon Johnson's a 6'5", 208-pound. Uh, I wouldn't call him a beanpole because he'd probably come up here and beat me up, but he's got a lot of speed, and the way to attack him in the running game is not to let him run to the sideline. You've really got to go right at a player like this. Kentucky unable to get the playoff, and that will do it for the third quarter. Louisville scores twice in the third. A touchdown pass by Stephon LaFors, and an interception return for a touchdown by Kerry Rhodes. Clark's TD makes it 21 to nothing. It's all about family here in Louisville. 21 to nothing. Louisville leads it as we start the fourth quarter. Shane Boyd has struggled in this game. We'll see if he can bring the Cats back from three scores down to the air on first down. Knocked away. Brandon Johnson makes another play. Time for our ESPN game track with the Cardinals leading 21-0. A good start for Louisville. A good start for Brian Drum in his college career. The freshman quarterback was outstanding. And he got some help defensively as well because Kerry Rhodes broke open the game in the third quarter with a pick six. Yeah, he did. And this broke it open. And this makes it look even better for Louisville than it really is because they have struggled with Kentucky's defense. On third and nine, Boyd with time. Hit as he throws, incomplete. Octavius Stanley got pressure in the quarterback and so did Marcus Jones. Elvis Dumerville was around the quarterback as well. well. This Louisville defense really struggled last year. They wore down towards the end of the year, gave up a boatload of points, were pushed all over the field, brought in a new defensive coordinator, and all of a sudden, they're playing aggressive, they're playing strong, and they look completely different from what they were last year. That new coordinator is Mike Cassidy from Illinois on Ron Turner's staff, and he's brought a new attitude here. Cassidy took an Illinois team who was last in rushing in the conference to fourth in rushing 
in his first year in a Big Ten championship. We'll see what he can do with Louisville. They have yet to uh, surrender a point in this game as Montrell Jones fair catches it at the 39. 30 70 yard punt by Anthony Ford. Intrastate rivalry between Kentucky and Louisville. Only about 60 miles separates these two schools. Louisville led just by seven points at halftime here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The Cardinals have scored twice in the second half. They passed with Rod Gilmore, Trevor Manich, and Dave Ryan. Stephon LaForest has split time with true freshman quarterback Brian Brom. But Brom has not played in the second half, even though he led Louisville on its lone scoring drive of the first half. LaForest to throw. He can take his pick. And he's going for Russell, and it's underthrown. Incomplete, knocked away by Carl Booker. Russell was open, though. Russell pushed Booker in the back. That very well could have been offensive pass interference. I think Louisville got away with one there. Now, Russell actually hasn't had the, the kind of day that we thought he could have, considering his skills and the advantage he has over the inexperienced corners for Kentucky. Kentucky using corners who were former wide receivers and still learning how to play the position. But they've been close to him. There hasn't been as much room to throw in terms of tight coverage that LaFour is expected. Kentucky without a starter, Bo Smith, who started seven games last year. He's out for the year with an injury, so they've had to use guys like Carl Booker, who was a wide receiver last year. Bush gets about a yard and a half on the carry, so third down and eight for Louisville. There's Warren Wilson, a backup corner, who's been banged up. Dave, you can take wide receivers and make them cornerbacks because they typically have good footwork and good hips. They can change direction. They can use their quick feet. And if you can do that, you have a chance. You always worry about, though, the aggressiveness and the attitude. Is the guy passive or is he a tough guy? Third and eight. LaForce. And the pass is intercepted by Chad Anderson. And Anderson still on his feet. Finally down inside the 30-yard line. Well, this is that tight coverage that we talked about. Safety Mike Williams does a great job with super tight coverage. That's what caused that ball to bounce up. It's just a cover two situation. They're settling down, and then it's just a kind of a good hit after Russell started losing the ball. And that was a pretty well-thrown ball. I think Russell didn't get his eyes and hands around Ford quickly enough, and it started coming up it almost did. when he was being hit. And, and Mike Williams was there. That's the key, though. You don't expect the safety to be able to have that tight of coverage against this high-powered in offense and receivers this fast. First turnover of the day for Louisville. Kentucky has to score. Great opportunity for the Wildcat offense. Best field position of the day by far for the road team. First down from the 30. And Boyd finds a man at the 25-yard line. Caught by Jared Parker. Gain of about five. Antoine Harris on the stop for Louisville. 13 minutes to go in this ball game. I, I think this is three... Four, four down territory. Here's Marcus Jones calling out signals, and he's just taking care of business down there in his three-point stance. That's not easy to do. No, it's not. But he's the fastest D line, and he covers a lot of ground from that three-point stance. They've got the true freshman, Tony Dixon, in the backfield on second down and five. See the play clock winding down. And boy, he's got Burton. Just over his head. Burton pulling in with one hand. Otherwise, it might have been a touchdown. A little bit too much on that pass. That's a ball that needs to have more air underneath it. If the quarterback gives it a little bit more air, then the receiver can catch that ball. Boyd has a tendency to throw too many balls too hard, too much on a line. If he gives it some air, sort of like a lob in tennis, you'll give your guy a chance to make that catch. Well, it's a different throwing motion, muscle memory between baseball and football. That's one of the reasons that he hasn't played baseball for a while, to make sure that the throwing motion doesn't get confused. And even so, he didn't hit that throw accurately. To pass on third down and five. 
And he was going to get leveled by Chad Rimsey, so he just threw that one into traffic and complete. Fourth down and five, and you'd think Kentucky would go for it here. Yeah, I think, uh, as I said a minute ago, with 13 minutes to go at this point in the field, they've got to get some points. They, they can't afford to kick for three or to punt this thing. They've got to go after it. And at this point, their biggest playmaker, number 19, Keenan Burton. He's been quiet all game long. Let's see if they throw to him. Might as well bring the house, right? Blitzen, the way he's throwing the ball. Absolutely. Fourth and five. They do blitz, and Boyd takes off. And he falls down past the marker for the first time, but there is a flag down in the backfield holding going to be called against Kentucky. A veteran offensive line will know that if they get beat, they can push their man beyond and their quarterback still has a shot. But if you grab them, then the quarterback doesn't have a shot. It will come back. Number 70 on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat, third down. Trevor, are officials looking more closely for holding in the offensive line on a play like that on fourth down and five? You know, I don't know that they're looking more closely, but they know that it's more likely to happen. You've got right here is Rollins, and his man goes by him. Well, no, you know something? I look at that play. I don't like that call. I think, I think he tripped. I don't think Rollins grabbed and threw down. I think his man fell over somebody else's legs. It was Bobby LeFew. Under pressure again is Boyd, sacked. Abe Brown at the 45-yard line. 10-yard loss, and Louisville takes over. Louisville turns it over, but Kentucky ends up losing yardage. And the Cardinals get it back with a three-touchdown lead. Louisville quarterback Stephon LaForce and his Cardinals, a 21-0 lead on our tribal Kentucky. Back in Louisville, joined by Joy LaForce, Stephon's wife. How difficult has it been for her husband to handle the ordeal, the competition with Brian Brown? How's he done with it? Um, I think he's handled himself really well. He's been really mature about it, and um, I think it shows a lot about his character and about how he handles things. Has he demonstrated some leadership, do you think, with a player like Brom? I know he's impressed with his abilities. Is that the feeling you get from talking to your husband? Oh, yes, definitely. He knows that Brom's going to be a great quarterback one day, but he knows that this is his senior year and this is his team. This is such a big rivalry. I know you two are from Louisiana, Baton Rouge, but how much does it mean to Stephon to win this game against the Art Travel Kentucky? Oh, yeah, definitely. It means a lot to him. He, is just, he was so excited about this game, and I think we're going to pull it off. Stefan's parents are deaf, as is his brother. Would you like to sign some of those guys back home? Sure, I tell my. Hi, Miss Susan, Mr. Larry, Eric, and Junan. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Dave. And normally, uh, Stefan's parents come to the game unless they're on television, so they're watching at home. And Stefan, really a great kid. The coaching staff says uh, he's as good a guy as they've uh, as they've had there. As Bush gets it to the 35-yard line, Abdullah on the tackle. 14-yard pickup, first down for the fours and company. Now, Kentucky fans, I think, have had enough. They're starting to leave. Maybe they want to get home and watch uh, Reese and Trev and Mark because they can get home in time to watch uh, at least maybe the, even the end of this game. Hey, they'll, they'll catch UNLV Tennessee coming up later yeah. as well. Yeah. A lot of red in this stadium tonight. You guys talked about Bruce Snyder earlier, and he's now uh, at UNLV with uh, John Robinson. He knocked off Wisconsin early last year. We'll see if they can do it to Tennessee. Here's Colby Smith, the fullback, kicking it inside the corner to the 17 yard line. Actually, that's Gates again on the carry. My mistake. Huffman on the tackle. This is typical Louisville football. The fourth quarter, their big backs start to get huge chunks of yardage because they've worn you down over the four quarters. It's hard to try and tackle 240, 250 pound backs for three hours. And before you can even get to those backs, you've got to get through the offensive line. Will Rabatine center blocked Levar, Lamar Mills number 45 and did a terrific job because Lamar Mills is an outstanding nose tackle. Rabatine blew open the hole in the middle. Which back do you like the most for Louisville guys? I'd have to say Bush right now. Movement on the offensive line. 
Well, college football's first weekend continues on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern, as we talked about. UNLV and Tennessee coming up 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. All part of Labor Day weekend presented by Rust Oleum Epoxy Shield on ESPN. Offside against Sweet Pea Burns of Kentucky, so first down and five for Louisville. Very curious to see how Tennessee bounces back from last season. Yeah, they're, they're a running team, and they got away from that a bit last year, and I think they'll try to get back to what their bread and butter is. High formation, run the football. Michael Bush, not in the game, gates the running back again, and he takes it to the 14-yard line, so he lost a yard of the play. Ellery Moore made the stop for Kentucky. Well, Louisville has a chance to get off to a great start before it takes on Miami, a former Big East school, now in the ACC. Yeah, that's, that's down there on October 14th. But I tell you, you, you got to like that one there. Louisville, September 11th at Army. How emotional and huge yeah. will that be? Absolutely. And here's Bush inside the 10 to the 5 and about the 2-yard line. Well, Louisville will be in the Big East Conference next year. And based on some of these scores involving Big East teams early in the college football season, the Cardinals will enter as one of the upper echelon teams in the Big East Conference. They're already thinking Big East. They had a block party here. A week and a half ago, Louisville folks are wearing Big East Conference on their shirts. Rick Pitino even there. Man, the basketball conference of the Big East is going to be terrific. Big East is becoming uh, solid, more competitive. How about Rutgers and Greg Schiano's guys knocking off John L. Smith in Michigan State yesterday? Rutgers, Connecticut, and West Virginia might be the three best teams. When is the last time you could say that about the Big East? And you have to give Greg Schiano just an awful lot of credit. People said he couldn't turn Rutgers around, couldn't make it competitive there. He left Miami a few years ago as a coordinator, became the head coach there. And he is sewing up high schools in New Jersey, which is an issue for Louisville because they want to expand their recruiting into New Jersey. They'll be taking on Greg Schiano and Rutgers as well. And the Big East being a BCS conference, it'll improve the recruiting because they can tell their recruits they'll have a shot at a national championship. Second down and goal from the three. Toss to Bush. And he is met by Darrell White and thrown backwards. No gain on the play. Well, you look at who's got the most wins against BCS teams since 2000. It's Louisville tied for first. And the good thing about that is that moving to the Big East and playing a full conference BCS schedule, they will not be odd or intimidated. They've been doing it without really having a legitimate shot at getting to the national championship game like they will when they are in the Big East. Now, they'll have to play well, but the road is open if they do. Well, Forrest calls for time. So we'll take a break. 21-0, Louisville leads Kentucky midway through the fourth quarter. ESPN's College Football Sunday is presented by Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield for the ultimate garage floor and in part by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. Louisville trying to beat Kentucky for the fifth time in the last six years. This intrastate rivalry favors the home team right now by three touchdowns. They're trying to make it a four TD game. And it's a handoff to Gates, who is very close to the goal line, but short. Abdullah makes the tackle for Kentucky. He reached out with the hand, but the ball was in the other hand. When you go down here, he'll hit and try to stretch. But he puts his left hand out like, oh, <laughs> got to know what, what hand your ball's in. And touchdown. No. <laughs> well, I shouldn't be surprised. Louisville going for it on fourth down. And Gates is in for his second touchdown of the day. Louisville.
Vrabel slams the door shut on Kentucky with 7.24 to go in the fourth quarter as Gates gets into the end zone for the second time in this game. Freshman Carmody on for the extra point. And it's 28 to nothing Louisville. We said earlier that uh, we weren't surprised that Louisville went for it. And here's why. Well, if you go back to last year, at the end of that game, up by nine points, running out the clock, just pounding away. They go for it on a fourth down to keep a drive alive. Get inside the five-yard line, less than 10 seconds. No, they don't take a knee. Gates gets another touchdown to finish them off last year. Well, hey, it's Kentucky, and Rich Brooks absolutely living it. He's got that same look on the sideline right now, that same purse's lips, and I'll tell you this, he will remember because he will have this sleeping giant Kentucky playing well. They will play this rivalry game, and I'll tell you what, he's comforting his players now, but he'll be celebrating with them down the road at some point. He has a long memory, this man. You know, in, in rivalry games, you get the boot on the neck of the other team, and you don't take it off, do you, Dave? No, <laughs> no, you don't, and uh, you look at the numbers there on that drive, it's not as if they're coming out and throwing the ball downfield. Kentucky just can't stop the run. Right, and part of it's the feed the studs philosophy. You've got Eric Shelton, Lionel Gates, Michael Bush. You've got to get a touchdown. You've got to keep these guys happy because you've got three guys that should each be a starter. Well, Gates had 11 touchdowns last year. Shelton had 10. Bush had six. Gates has two in this game. On the return is freshman John Logan. His uncle was an excellent running back in Kentucky, played in the NFL. There are the uh, studs for Louisville at running back, the triple threat of Shelton, Gates, and Bush. And interested to see when we come back here, this uh, group will be back here for Louisville and South Florida, where Louisville is as a football team, because they, they will have already played Miami at that point. You remember the Pony Express backfield way back in the day with Eric Dickerson and Craig James? They thought that one backfield wasn't big enough for the two of them. They've got three of them here at Louisville. But a tough day for Kentucky quarterback Shane Boyd. His first start, obviously, of this year. Really his first significant playing time at quarterback since 2001 when he beat out Jared Lorenzen. That one should have been caught. He's 3 of 11 from the floor, or from the... Uh, through the air, and DeWalt had that one go through his hands incomplete. Well, tonight, two teams hoping for a spot in Major League Baseball's postseason meet. Vizquel and Martinez and the rest of the Indians take on Guerrero and the Angels. 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Coverage begins with baseball tonight, driven by GMC on ESPN at 7 Eastern. It's also available in Spanish on ESPN Deportes. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, or the Dish Network today. Had a Freudian slip on the uh, the basketball there, a three for 11 from the floor. Just turning into pretty good football rivalry, even though Louisville is going to go on to win for the fifth time in six games. Kentucky will be back. I think Rich Brooks, once he gets a full set of scholarships, will be able to turn this thing around. Well, how much, though, of uh, pouring on the score is a bit of Bobby Petrino endearing himself to the fans of Louisville again after everything that he's been through with them and the whole Auburn situation. Last year flirted with Auburn or Auburn flirted with him depending on who you talk to even though Tommy Tuberville had a job down there. That was one year after John L. Smith literally accepted the head coaching job at Michigan State at halftime of Louisville's bowl game. I think the players are starting to wonder was it them? But Petrino signed an extension and he uh, told us that he is here to stay at Louisville. Glenn Holt wide open down the field. And finally, tackled at the 42-yard line. Gary Rhodes hit him first. Dominic Dunbar cleans him up. 33-yard pickup. Well, we talked about Boyd throwing the ball too hard. Not this time. He gives it air. He gives his receiver a chance to make a play. Look at that. He had him wide open, floated the ball into him. That's a nice job. And Dave, your point on... Petrino is an excellent one, and remember, he's been trying to repair that damage done by the flirtation with Auburn. A good throw by Boyd. What a tackle by McHugh as he takes down Davis. He certainly looks the part. Look at those guns on Robert McHugh, 12th tackle of the game. Well, Petrino enjoys coaching people like this. He's going to enjoy coaching Ryan Brome for the next three years. 
after this year, but he's really done a lot to help endear himself here. He's donated $100,000 of his own money to the Cardinals indoor facility. Joe Paterno's done that. Bobby Knight has done that, but I can't think of any other coaches that really have. And, and he wants to let the community know that he's not going anywhere. He, he wants to stay here. But I, and I think Dave's Number point 61. is a well taken On the offense, one. five yards, first and 15. When you talk about the flirtation and trying to endure himself here and the things that he's done, but also Brian Brom, that means a lot too because there's the sense that he's made a commitment to Brian Brom to getting him ready for the NFL, and that means he's going to stick around here for a bit, even if suitors come calling. As his brother here, Paul, who's the offensive coordinator. As Boyd has time to put off, but everybody's covered downfield. Now somebody gets open, and the catch is made by Jared Parker inside the 25. Maybe we're seeing the maturation, even though he is a senior, he hasn't played a whole lot, of quarterback Shane Boyd. Absolutely right on the money. We've seen two throws by him back-to-back -back that are better than any throws he's made all game. He's giving his receivers a chance. Now, that might not help them win this ball game, but it will help Kentucky down the line this year. Yes, and you're also seeing the maturation of that young offensive line. That was tremendous one-on-one -on -one protection that allowed Boyd to do his thing. Six-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Boyd being pressured from behind. Shows his arm strength as he throws back across his body and finds Holt for about an eight-yard pickup. They're going to coach him out of that one. He'll stop throwing back across his body. But the play before, this is a beautiful throw. He's been throwing everything so hard, but two times in a row, he takes something off and floats it to the receiver to give him a chance. Boyd again to the air on second and two. That pass a little bit wide of Parker, the intended receiver. So it's third down and two. Jacob Tanny actually the intended receiver on that throw. Dave, you mentioned the scholarship problem at Kentucky since they've been on probation since the Howell Mummy era a few years ago. They've lost scholarships the last few years. They've only given out 39 scholarships the last two years. Most schools can give out 25 a year, that's up to 50. They're going back to normal next year, so they've got a chance to build their classes up. 73 scholarships this year for Rich Brooks. See what Boyd does here on third down and two. It's an option. And Boyd is in trouble. Down he goes at the 21. Chad Rimsey on the tackle. <laughs> Seven yard loss and Kentucky will go on fourth down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Boyd gets it away. It's caught, but incomplete. Out of play. Burton could not get his foot down. Robert McHugh came flying up the middle, and it's an incompletion. Now notice there's a difference between the NFL. In the NFL, if the receiver is carried or pushed out of bounds, that might be complete. In college football, you have to get a foot down, and I thought maybe Burton was close to getting the foot down. The foot may have hit the foot of the defender, which would have been in play. 28 nothing Louisville. Let's look and see if Keenan Burton got his toe down before he went out of bounds. It was ruled incomplete. Watch his right foot as it comes up in the air. Now he's going to make the catch. And let's see if that hits the ground right there. And then you can see the black rubber from under that turf kick up. It looked like he was in bounds. I was going to argue with you. I was saying that during the break, and you said he was out of bounds. Now you're convinced that he is in bounds. Well, that, that's because I was looking at the defender's foot. The defender was out of bounds, but the defender wasn't catching the ball. <laughs> yeah, you know, remember Dave Ryan showed us early in the ball game that there's a lot of rubber under there, and when that stuff kicks up, you know where the foot was. Just like that. We see his hand right there. That is, that is black, ground-up rubber, and it kicks up like dust. So in the Big Ten, would that have been reviewable? Absolutely. Depends on how good your Tebow is, I guess. 
catch made out of the 26-yard line. And there are a couple of reviews. Roger Clark uh, on the uh, catch as Brian Brom threw the pass. But uh, we saw a couple of reviews in the first half of that Wisconsin game yesterday on ESPN. One of those was questionable. Over 190 rushing yards in this game, which is 66 for Kentucky. Louisville doubling up the Wildcats in total yards, but the turnover is huge in this game. One of those turns returned for a touch. Another running play. And Colby Smith cuts it back. And goes down to the 45. And an 18-yard pickup for Colby Smith, the fourth slash tailback slash fullback on this Louisville team. And he's not bad either. And this is about as close as you can get if you're Petrino to pulling off the stops. You got your freshman quarterback in there. You got your fourth string running back, because the first three are all three Division I caliber, maybe NFL caliber. And now Smith comes in and rips off a big run. I don't know what you can do if you're Petrino to back off anymore at this point. No, he's called the dogs off. He's He's got some youngsters in there. It's up to Kentucky to tackle and stop him right now. The true freshman Brian Brom at a quarterback. Led Louisville down for the, I guess what you'd call the game-winning drive in the first half. As Bush takes it off the edge to the 42-yard line of Kentucky. 13-yard pickup for Michael Bush, former Mr. Football in Kentucky top safety in high school a couple years ago now these are basic running plays that Kentucky ought to be loaded up for and they ought to be trying to handle this is not a situation again where it looks like Bobby Petrino is trying to run up the score you can make the argument I think a good one that they ran it up last year but I don't think it's happening right now no, and you've got all their running backs are talented but also fresh when well, you've got three starting caliber backs that you can rotate through at this point they're much fresher than the defense can possibly be another running play it's Gates this time how about those moves to the 10 and finally taken on a play inside the eight yard line you just have to look at how far Gates went before he even had to make a move guys aren't getting off blocks guys aren't after the running back Gates trying to tackle and that's a function of being exhausted when you look at what you just said he's going to go all the way back to the left and nobody is around him. The reason is they're slow in pursuit. They've been keep trying to chase and tackle these 240-pound backs all game long, and at this point, Kentucky's defense has had it. 34 yards on that rush, and 110 yards on the day for Gates. Shelton into the game, and this time he gets taken down the line of scrimmage. Ellery Moore, starting left defensive end, makes the tackle. Mike Petrino just threw him a bone. He just ran it right up the middle on a simple zone play. Said, look, you guys, tackle him, please. I don't want to look bad. Eight and a half yards per carry for Lionel Gates. Remember last year, Louisville led the country in yards per rush at 5.7. I think Bobby Petrino, looking back on last year, thought that there were two mistakes he made. One, the flirtation with Auburn, and then the second one, running up the score last year. I don't think you'll see a timeout call down here this time to get a score. If they do it, it's just poor tackling on Kentucky's front. Interested to see how Louisville's defense performs as the competition gets a little bit tougher as Shelton drags a defender inside the three. Remember last year they lost three of their last five games. Yeah, they did and they looked bad, but bringing in defensive quarter Mike Cassidy from Illinois was huge. Kentucky's offense is struggling now because of certain things we've talked about this game, but even in fall camp in the scrimmages against Louisville's own high-powered offense, Louisville's defense has looked sharp, and they've disrupted Stephon LaFour's and this Louisville offense as well. So I think it's not just a function of, of playing Kentucky at this time of year. I think that defense is looking to be possibly very, very good. The fans are calling for a touchdown. They want more. The answer to that? Half a slice of pizza, fans. We've got enough. And off and inside the three-yard line goes Gates, maybe to the two. Do they go on fourth down and goal? Now, the fans, they want the touchdown. Now, I think here Bobby Petrino is not going to do that. After last year, I don't see him going for it this time. I think he is. I think he's going He's for tempted, it, though. If he does it, this is bad news. You can he's see tempted. the wheels turning. Oh, he's you tempted. You can see the he's wheels turning. Don't do it, Bobby. Don't do it, Bobby. 
Come on, back off, Bobby. That's three consecutive runs right up the middle, and if they go for it here, they'll probably just give it up the middle again and say, okay, Kentucky, stop us if you can. If they run this outside, no, they're going to victory for them. Uh, yeah, right good call. job, Bobby. We're <laughs> up here. That's the right call. Uh, the fans don't like it. How do you boo? You just won 28 nothing over your intrastate rival. You know, that's almost more embarrassing than not. You know, we could score, but we're going to throw you a ball. It's the right call, but if you're Kentucky, you can't win either way. Classy move by Bobby Petrino. Tom Jurek, the athletic director, embracing the man he hired, Bobby Petrino, a couple of years ago, and the man he almost lost last year and then gave an extension to. Understandably, all smiles here today. Yeah, that was the right move by Petrino. If you're Kentucky, I don't think you can win. I think if he pulls it off or if he goes for it, it's about equal on that side of the ball. But from Petrino's standpoint, especially given the history of this rivalry, going back to John L. Smith, especially, that was the right move. Is Louisville as good on offense as you guys thought coming into this game? Can they be one of the top offenses in, the, in college football? I think they have the potential. I think they're out of sync right now. They're not quite there. It's going to take him a while to work it in. On the final play, the pass is caught out to the 34-yard line by Scott Mitchell, and that ends the game. Now, actually, one second left, so they get to run one more play as they stop the clock to move the chains. But this offense, Dave, if it comes together and they surprise Miami, look out. The only big game they have left after that would be Memphis. They could be a surprise team. Louisville does have the opportunity to run the table. If they can get by Miami. DeWalt gets sandwiched at the 41-yard line. And that's it. Stefan LaForce. And Brian Brown team up to get the win for Louisville. Rich Brooks makes his way towards Bobby Petrino. They seek each other out for the handshake. And Louisville wins it by a final score of 28 to nothing. Bobby Petrino and the Louisville Cardinals with a terrific performance on both ends, offense and defense. Coming up next, college game day scoreboard. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, go to ESPN.com. For Rod, Trevor, and Dave, Dave Pash saying so long from Louisville. So one of the favorites to take the title in their last year in Conference USA, Louisville off to a great start with a 28-0 win over Kentucky. Trev Alberts and Mark May joining me. Guys, that was Louisville's eighth win over a team from a BCS conference that leads the nation among teams not in BCS conferences. Of course, Louisville moving to the Big East as a full-fledged member next year, stockpiling a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. Both sides of the ball. That's the key phrase you just said there, Reese. We knew about Louisville and their offense and Brian Brom, that the future is now for them at quarterback. Looked very good offensively. But for me, the most impressive thing was Louisville's defense. I mean, I know it's Kentucky, but this is an SEC opponent, and they held up to about 180 yards of total offense. Good quickness up front. They fly to the football. This is a total football team, Mark. Louisville looked pretty good. Yeah, they were very impressive to me. And I think when you look at the big picture in this situation, it's the state of Kentucky that's at stake for recruiting. I think every year each coach tries to stick it to the other coach and Bobby Petrino has the one up in this situation and this is a type of team that can go far that can possibly run the table in Conference USA but the other thing in this situation that I caution Bobby Petrino the head coach of Louisville when you substitute two quarterbacks and play two quarterbacks it's only going to create a problem down the road now you use Brian Brown and Stefan LaFours in this game you have to decide on one quarterback I understand you have to get the freshman ready to play but the way that it was done today I question that when you start LaFours just for a series then you bring the backup in and then start alternating that may create a problem down the road to find out who's got the leadership of this offensive huddle. Got a senior, you have a freshman in there, LaForce has played a lot, Brahm, a highly talented guy. It will be a balancing act for Bobby Petrino for the rest of the season. Those eight wins against BCS Conference opponents, Impressive. that's one ahead of Fresno right now. Fresno has an opportunity against Washington. Well, the first thing you notice when you arrived at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium yesterday for the Cardinals going against the Cats is it was hot. I mean, hot. It was hot. It was a nice, nice day. We uh, <laughs> arrived at uh, Card March and marching down there. It was certainly hot. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit hotter on the field than it is in the stands. Uh, usually about 12 to 14 degrees hotter down on the surface.
Rocco, a sports information director, was just sharing with us that it was right at 100 degrees uh, down there on the surface. It did, but it did. I didn't notice it as much as I thought I would. I thought as the game went on, it kind of cooled off a little bit. And our players were fortunate. The Saturday before in our last scrimmage, it was very hot, and we went with a long scrimmage. So I think our strength and conditioning coaches did a great job for us. And your depth plays right into uh, being able to shuffle players in and out, in, especially in this game. Yeah, it certainly does, and especially at running back. You know, in the yeah. fourth quarter, into the third quarter, when we start running the ball like we need to, um, we had fresh backs in there. Well, I know the fans are ready. Everybody's ready. Let's take a look at the highlights and hear what the coach has to say as we go through the first half of yesterday's game. And we were talking about he, you've got the fans out there trying to keep yeah, those guys cool. Yeah, you got the fans and the misters and, and everything you can to try to keep it cool. But uh, great crowd. 42,681. And all packed in there ready to see this young man get, get the Cardinals rolling. This was the third play of the game. We had scripted. Uh, got Josh down the numbers. He keeps his feet there. I think he scores. He kind of tripped right as he was catching the ball. But nice play, a nice throw by Stefan. Then we come back in a little shotgun run that we've been working hard at. Lionel Gates gets a nice run down the sideline. Lionel ran the ball real well all night long, all day long. And uh, he certainly is having a good, good start of the season. 112 yards averaged eight per carry. That's pretty darn good. Here a little third down play, and we actually had the guy open in the end zone, didn't get the edge block. Stefan took off and ran, and he thought he got it in, and they didn't, and uh, it's unfortunate here on fourth down, made a decision to go for it. Didn't quite get the push up front that we needed, but also our fullback and our tailback have to do a better job there. Did, did that change the complexion a little bit? Were the guys down after that a little bit? Well, not really down. We just like to have the points on the board. Sure. And here's our defense stopping the run. Bobby LaFuse uh, back at full health and had a nice game for us. Really did a good job keeping square down the line of scrimmage. Hung a goose egg up there. That's outstanding. They did a nice job. Here we got our uh, true freshman quarterback in, Brian Brom. Brian had a good game. I thought this is his first play as a Cardinal. Play we call 142 firm hitch. And... JR made a nice catch for him, got a couple extra yards after the catch, and good way to start out. You he, can see there analyzing his throw, he needs to keep his left shoulder down a little bit. He's uh, completed six of seven, and he's going to take him uh, into the end zone. Here we are in the second quarter. Yeah, here's a third down play. Not only made a nice throw, got the ball to Broderick Clark, but he also saw the blitz they had coming, changed the protection, and that's something I think that uh, we've worked hard on getting him to do. Big play here, fourth and three, and you've got the freshman out there. And uh, we, we do call his number. We called his number. This is the quarterback run we had designed for this situation. And one thing is being the backup, you don't get to practice these plays all the time. Sometimes you just have to understand. Stefan ran that play in practice, and, and uh, Brian kind of looked at me like I was crazy when I called <laughs> it. But he did a nice job executing it. And then here he is on a pitch going in for the end zone to Lionel. He actually reverse pivoted the wrong way, but recovered and made the pitch. Okay, that makes it 7 to nothing. That's a five-yard touchdown play, and the Cardinals are up 7 to zip. And uh, you're in the second quarter, and here we are back on offense again, but having to punt. Yeah, Brent did a really nice job punting. I think he averaged over 50 yards, and his net was even higher than that. And here we get to down the ball back in the, I think it was on the six-yard line. Yeah. So he did a great job punting. Bet you wish you could get your wedges to stop that quick, huh? That yeah, nice. well, my wedge just keeps rolling, <laughs> bouncing. Another uh, inside zone play that they ran, and what's nice to see there is we had four or five guys right there, caused a fumble, and got the ball back for the offense in a position where we should have went and scored. In this drive, we hurt ourselves with penalties. We get an offensive pass interference here on, on JR where he pushed off a little bit, and then we just backed up and going the wrong way, and that's something we have to address and get better at. I'm really disappointed in the penalties that we did have offensively. Okay, so this one's against you, and uh, as, as you said, uh, you guys were moving, just stopping yourselves in the first half. Yeah, definitely, and then here we get another uh, nice punt by Brent Moody, and uh, actually went through the guy's legs, hit him a little bit. We just weren't there quick enough to get on it, but again, nice job of changing the field position and, and good coverage on the play. He averaged 51 yards on this punt. Outstanding. Here's Shane Boyd. Back to pass uh, yep. late in the quarter. Elvis chasing him. Elvis had a nice game and did a real good job. And he tries to haul one deep. And Kerry goes up and makes a nice interception right at the end of the half. And um, we go into halftime now up seven to nothing and uh, have some corrections to do at halftime offensively and defensively. We just had to keep going and keep playing the way we were. 
course, Rhodes would get two interceptions in this game. But uh, we'll take a look at that second one a little bit later. Seven to nothing. You're in the lead. What'd you say at halftime, Coach? Well, offensively, we had to settle down and, and execute better, and make sure we didn't hurt ourselves with penalties, and uh, just understand that uh, we were a little impatient. I think so. We got our patience back. We got back to some of our run play action game and and started to move the ball well in the third and fourth quarter. When you were coming into this game, did you think you'd uh, be able to run the ball as easy as you could, or did you think there'd be more passing, or what, was it about what you expected as far as run and pass? No, actually, we'd like to throw the ball a little bit more than that. Uh, I think uh, our running backs were running well, and, and we got hit a couple times at quarterback, and right. I probably got a little conservative with the play calling as the game went on, and, and just wanted to make sure that we finished running the ball real well. Okay. Well, the Cardinals are up 7 to nothing at halftime. We're going to take a look at the second half highlights. That's coming up next on the Coach Bobby Petrino Show. Well, it's 7 to nothing at halftime, but uh, the Cardinals have to feel pretty good with the depth they have and, and the heat, figuring maybe that uh, you're going to be able to just wear down Kentucky. Well, we did feel good about uh, the fact that we were ahead. We didn't feel good about it, that we were playing our best football. But uh, I think we came out of the locker room and defense understood what they had to do. And offensively, we were ready to get on a roll. What Did you have to tweak anything on the offense, Bobby? Well, we made a couple adjustments how we were blocking a few running plays and a few protections to make sure we got it protected. But to be honest with you, we were just making some little mistakes that uh, we don't normally make. Okay. And uh, a big play always helps to uh, get your rolling the right way, right? Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, fortunately, Kerry Rhodes was up to the task. Let's take a look at the second half highlights again. Louisville is leading the way. It is seven to nothing. And here we go. Kentucky uh, gets the ball to start the third quarter. Yeah, a little kickoff return here. We had a, a lane problem and night, really nice tackle there by Todd. And, you know, we uh, seem to have to make sure we work our kickoff guys on, on their tackling skills because it's a problem that seemed to carry over from last year. That's Louisville native Keenan Burton with a 44-yard carry. And here comes that big play. And it was a little naked bootleg they ran. Marcus Jones did a real nice job on his responsibility, which was the quarterback in that, in that front and uh, caused an errant throw carries where he needed to be and picked it off and there was nobody there just ran right into the end zone and that was really a momentum change I thought it was a big play in the game. Kerry Rhodes told me uh, time and time again this year the defense is going to be much much better this year in particular number one and he made it happen there and here you are on defense again. A little screen play and Brandon Johnson I thought ran around and played real fast out there yesterday had a lot of tackles and he is a real smart football player knew the screen was coming and wait, went, made a nice tackle. There were red jerseys all over Shane Boyd yesterday. They were, and that was a really nice job on our pass rush. And had him in the grass, he threw the ball, and I'm not really sure what uh, intentional grounding is after that play. Well, it certainly looked like it, and I think most of the people in Cardinal, uh, in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium thought it was. And here you get uh, this uh, attempt blocked. Yeah, we do, and that's unfortunate. His first field goal attempt, and we've got to do a better job on protection, but... Real nice job by Lonel DeWalt on the jump and ability and, and batting it down. Here we get another sack. A good job on the rush again by Montavia Stanley and Elvis Doomerville. And they were up to the task, really played well. I thought this was a big play for us. We had just got a penalty. Michael ran out a little screen play and he ran through a couple tackles and made a big play, 41 yard gain. And got us on a roll, got the momentum going. Well, that I thought Michael really kind of took over the second half and, and ran the ball and, and gave us some great plays. That was a 41-yard gain, and here's LaFour is once again. Nice pass right here to uh, tight end. Yeah, it was really a nice job on the naked, and, and Adam McCauley with the reception, and it was wide open. And we hit a good play against the Blitz. This one is sweet, Coach. This is really nice here. Stefan shows his scrambling ability. Real nice job by Broderick Clark keeping his feet in bounds and, and looking the ball in. And, getting a touchdown and give us a little breathing room go up by three scores of 21 to nothing seven plays 81 yards uh he covers just under two minutes and you are on top 21 to nothing and we are headed into the fourth quarter fourth quarter here the next drive on a third down and stefan made a nice throw hit jr right in the chest ball bounced up and and uh they got an interception there with chad anderson and uh, just an unfortunate play that the quarterback has to take responsibility for that interception this was a really nice play called by uh, Coach Cassidy. It was a fourth down play, and he brought a nice zone blitz there, and 
And uh, our new linebacker, Abe Brown, made a nice play. Here comes number 19 again, Michael Bush, stepping downfield. He did. He did a nice job on the run game. And uh, Colby had a really nice lead block there for him. And we started now to kind of wear him down and take over running the football. Here we had Stefan made an audible check, recognized the blitz, made a nice run check away from it. Eric Shelton had a really nice block, and, and Lionel was out running in the secondary, and that was good to see. He had 112 yards, your three backs, 224 yards, and here goes Lionel into the end zone. Real nice lead block again by Eric Shelton, and a good kick out by uh, Jason Spitz, and get the ball in the end zone, 28 nothing. And we should have called that game earlier, or that play earlier in the game. Maybe we'd have 35 points on the board. You're talking about uh, early in the game, first quarter. Exactly. Okay. And here, here's uh, Shane Boyd once again being uh, hammered and uh, just pushed around. Yeah, one of the things we went into the game saying we had to stop their option play. We did a real nice job of it. I think he got out one time and, and made a play, but there we got him. Here we run a little draw play, put Colby Smith in late in the game, and Colby has fresh legs and is a very fine running back. He got injured about a week ago, so didn't play as much as he normally will. He made a really nice run there. And here we get Lionel again out in the secondary and did a nice job beating free safety. JR's out there hustling, running, getting a block in front of him and get the ball down inside the 10-yard line. Put us in a position to end the game the similar to the way we did a year ago. Now tell me more about the, the similar, because uh, we're going to come up here and see the players. Brian Brom back in, uh, and he takes a knee, Coach. Uh, he takes a knee, and we get out of the game with 28 to nothing victory, and we're real happy about that. And You know, uh, it's a great job by our team, good job by our defense, and now we just got to put it behind us, get back to practice on Tuesday, and get ready to go up to Army. Okay, 28 to nothing, that's the way to start. We're going to talk about Army. We're also going to hear some, from some of the players, their comments after the game. And we're going to take a look at the play of the game. Is that okay with you, Coach? You bet. All right, we're going to do all that when we come back on the Coach Bobby Petrino Show. <laughs> 